as Morgan State head coach. He hopes to point the Bears in a new direction. He could learn a lot from Billy Joe, whose Florida a and Rattlers have dominated the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference over the last few years, winning the last two championships. Their matchup in the Riverfront Classic is coming up next. in Cincinnati, Ohio, on the banks of the Ohio River. Florida A&M and Morgan State set for the fourth annual Riverfront Classic. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday of Black College Sports on NBC, along with my partner, Mark Gray. I'm Dwayne Ballin. A couple of teams from the Mideastern Athletic Conference, one pick to finish number one, one to finish last. Well, Morgan State University is a program that hasn't had a winning season in almost, in over two decades, pardon me, and they feel that today represents an opportunity here in the Queen City for them to begin the dawn of a new beginning, so to speak. Meanwhile, Florida A&M is a team that wears the championship swagger of having two championship rings, and they feel it's their destiny, DB, to win that third ring in a row. Well, friends, you're going to be treated to some very nice individual talent, our app-like players to watch, Casey Printers and Vashante Shianko. Well, Casey Printers is a legitimate big-time talent. The TCU transfer is mentioned as one of the three Heisman Trophy quarterbacks in the state of Florida, and that's pretty lofty company when you're ranked right up there behind Rex Grossman and Ken Dorsey at Miami. Meanwhile, at Morgan State, you've got tight end Vashante Shianko, a legitimate NFL prospect, had a big game against against Towson State, has the speed to get deep downfield, can go across the middle and make big plays. If Morgan stands a chance of winning the day, it's all about Vashante Shanko having a big game, taking pressure off of other talented players that they have at the skill position. Let's bring in the third member of our announced team today, a man that knows a little something about football in Cincinnati, former Bengal star Lewis Breeden. Lewis? All right, guys, when you talk about Morgan State and they haven't won for a long time, it means they've had a lot of problems in the past. And that started yesterday with the problem getting out of the, the airport out of Baltimore, Maryland. When they left, they tried to leave. Smoke came out of the engine. Everybody had to get off and deboard, and they found out they had engine problems. They had to fly a part in from all places all the way from here from Cincinnati. When they finally get off and get to Cincinnati, they had to fly around for about an hour and a half before they can land a trip that should normally take about an hour and a half took them about nine hours that may have some impact on the ball game today because they didn't have a chance to walk around here at Paul Brown Stadium thank you Lewis the Florida A&M Rattlers and the Morgan State Bears the Riverfront Classic is coming up from the Queen City on NBC in part by Verizon Reeves Our keys to winning? Well, the keys for Florida A&M are clearly the progress of Casey Printers in running the Gulf Coast offense. He's slowly but surely getting better at it. And they've got to beware of overconfidence. Don't take the Bears lightly because going into the fourth quarter last year, Morgan was only trailing 14 to 9. Donald Hill Ely beginning his first season keys of winning for his Morgan State Bears. Well, Morgan has to stop somebody. You're looking at an offense that's giving up about 415 yards per game on the ground. And, of course, when you talk about the Bears, they got to have some breaks against a team that wears a swagger, that has a championship pedigree, and just feels like they're going to win. And that team, Florida A&M, has won the toss, elected to receive. So E.J. Collier and Cardin Alexander are back to receive. Paul Brown Stadium, the Riverfront Classic here on NBC. Nice, very nice ballpark. Very impressed. Kind of gives you the feel of Sydney, Australia during the Olympics of the Opera. Jonathan Baroshalin set to kick it off for Morgan State. Beautiful afternoon. Temperature somewhere around 80. And this kid, Baroshalin, DB, is a weapon. He doubles his post punter and place kicker, and he's got a big time on a leg, pardon me. And the Riverfront Classic is underway. That's Cardin Alexander, who will get it out to the 33-yard line. And that's where Florida A&M's Gulf Coast offense, led by Casey Printers, will take over. 
Well, Casey Printers has speed, and look at the accuracy. You're talking about a kid that has put the ball up quite frequently, but hasn't gotten an interception in the first two contests, and that's big because, as Coach Joe told us before the game, the Jawan Siders and the Patrick Bonners, who are all Americans, who signed NFL contracts and transferred in, they weren't as far along as Printers is at this stage of their last season. Printers to the air on first down. As a receiver, Donald Banya. Printers last week, exceptional game. Back to the receivers are Verizon, Florida A&M lineup. Richard Pompey, Miller, Banya, Charles Allen. You'll hear a lot about that talented senior. Marco Junius, second down. Printers going across the middle, has a man open at the 40-yard line. First down, big pickup for Florida A&M. Well, Florida A&M coming out of the locker room in a no-huddle set. And, and the release right across the middle on a slot pattern. A little skinny post in the center of the field set up by the play-action fake. Strike right on line in the center of the field, and they pick up a big first down. Rod Miller with the reception on second down. Morgan State's defense responds. That play you just saw brings up something to watch. As we look at the offensive line for Florida A&M, Moten, Williams, Jones, Rogers, and Morris. And this is a rotund offensive line, averaging up to 295 pounds at over six feet tall. Loss of one on the play, second and 11 for the 39 of Morgan State. Printers drops it off across the middle. Morgan State will be tested in the air in this game. That is a weakness for Duncan Hill Ely's Bears. Certainly, because they're without their, their perennial starter, Justin Patton, who's supposed to be the starting strong safety this season, and he's done for the year with a bad MCL, and the center of the field is wide open. Prentice on third down, overthrows his receiver, looking for Rod Miller. Well, Miller, another one of those fast, undersized receivers that seems to work so well in the slot. Great protection up front. The big nasty's getting a good job, and then there's a tip coming across the middle by Morgan State's Thomas Potts. Gets a big meat cleaver on it and deflects the pass, setting up a fourth down. So on fourth and eight from the 36, Billy Joe, the head coach of Florida A&M, elects to go for it. Printers out of the shotgun. Has a man, but the ball is broken up and there will be a change in possession. So a good job on the opening drive by Morgan State's defensive unit. Well, the setup, there's one-on-one -on -one coverage, a slant pattern crossing route, and Sam Massey just does a better job of getting his hand on the ball than does Junius coming across the middle trying to make that catch. That's a catch Paco normally makes, but that's a setup play. They're gonna run the post and get Junius deep. That's just something we're going to set up right now. Donald Hill Ely, head coach from Morgan State. His first season as a head coach, 34 years of age. His Bears come out and go to the ground immediately. A pickup of maybe three yards. T.J. Starling's in there with that carry that time. Now, and LeJominic Washington is getting the start at quarterback. This is his first action of the season this year, DB, coming back from a meniscus injury where he just had surgery. And it's ironic that he starts because Bradshaw Littlejohn has played the first couple of games, is fourth in the nation in total offense. Washington knows the system better, though, than Littlejohn. Second and seven for the Bears, no score. I think we'll have some... Well, I was shocked I didn't see any laundry on the court at that time because for Florida A&M, it seemed early in that play, you had big number 57 there, John Edwards, the defensive lineman, jumping offside. What call? Morgan State's backs and receivers of a rising lineup, Stallings, Walters, Henry, Sherman, Shianko. You really like Sherman. I really do. Averaging over 48 yards per kickoff return as well, so he's a talent to watch. A pickup of four on the play, third and six from the 40-yard line. Dominic Washington leading Morgan State out. First offensive set, rolling out. Decides to keep it. Has room, has a first down. And quickly goes down. Well, that's just tremendous individual effort. Morgan is going to try to roll out, coming to the near side right here. And he's going to take off and find a little seam in this area. And watch. He makes his decision, gets a little help from the umpire right there, gets into the secondary, and he picks up the first down. 
First and 10 from the 47-yard line of Florida A&M for Morgan State. Early first quarter of the Riverfront Classic from Cincinnati. More movement along the line, no flag. Kind of liberal that, with that uh, offside call, aren't they? Defensive line for Florida A&M, Green, Edwards, Scott, and Kelly. Kelly led the MEAC in sacks last season. Linebackers, one of the best. Second and nine from the 46-yard line, Morgan State scoreless in the first quarter against Florida A&M. Washington elects to keep it, gets very little as he, as he is met by a number of Florida A&M Rattlers. Bears. Secondary, Kwaku, Brown, Copeland, Brown, very talented. He's the leader back there. He certainly is, Dwayne, and Levy Brown is probably the most glaring omission to the all-MEAC postseason team from a year ago. I mean, he's all over the field, and I think that's a big matchup to watch, especially if Shanko becomes a factor in this contest because Levy Brown just doesn't miss tackles. That brings up third and eight from the 45-yard line. Washington looking to the air, short pass off the mark. He was looking for William Sherman. Well, you know something? This is a great job of number 11 just shadowing everybody in the pass route that time. You know, Levy Brown came across the middle on the man-to-man -man coverage, and he was shadowing Shanko, and it made it look like a 2D, and Washington then short, short hopped the grounder <laughs> to his intended receiver. William Sherman back at his 10-yard line to receive Baroshalin's punt. Let it bounce into the end zone. Florida A&M will take over possession at the 20-yard line. Both teams opening series, no go. A scoreless tie in Cincinnati. Back after this. University Marching Band, you will be treated to their show at halftime. We will bring you everything from the Riverfront Classic. A marching 100. And it always perplexes me how you've got about seemingly 500 band members, and they're only known as the Marching 100. How's that work out? Rounding out with that new math to the nearest 100. Ah, that's what it is. Casey Prentice brings out Florida A&M on first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Scoreless in the first quarter, Florida A&M and Morgan State. In motion is Charles Allen. And on the ground, Florida A&M elects to go. It's Devin Richardson, who had 111 yards last week in the victory over Morris Brown. Yeah, but he got some good help up front that time. The big nasty's doing a good job. Tell us Rogers, check that. Fletcher Williams and Cedric Bolton doing a good job of trap blocking to open that hole. On second down, Prentice to the air, just beyond the outstretched hands of his receiver, Rod Miller. Boy, Miller had come across the center of the field. And I'm having Isaac Brown flashbacks. You remember from last season, DB? A little undersized receiver who ran that post route so well can get in the center of the field. But very smart offensive strategy by Florida A&M to this point to attack Morgan in the center of the field, where, frankly, they have been soft for the first two games this season. Third and two. Printers out of the shotgun. Richardson again. Gets the first down where Albert Gamble rides him down. That time behind center, Kenneth Jones. Huge hole opens up in the center of the offensive line. Florida and then staying with their, their brand of fast break football. Gulf Coast offense, very little time in between plays as you see. Printers out of the shotgun. Under pressure, lets it go. Dangerous pass, knocked away. Boy, that's Sam Massey is doing a good job right now in coverage. Locked up one-on-one -on -one against Miller that time. And, and, and it's interesting about Massey because one thing going in, teams have been picking on him, number 23, because he's adjusting after having been out last season. Well, at least for the early on here against Florida A&M, he is locked in. Second down for Florida A&M, no score. Printers again to the air. And a little beyond Dennis Banya's hands and out of bounds. Well, this is a kid who's like 6'3", 180. 
Let's take a look at Fletcher Williams right here in the interior of the line. And he just gets a big hand on Morgan State's Jason Whaley. And he is not letting him get near his quarterback. Williams, 6'4", 295 pounds, senior from Pensacola. Impressive offensive line for Florida A&M. Third down. Printers again to the air, under pressure, has a receiver across the middle. It's Allen who gets the first down before he's corralled by a number of Morgan State Bears, including Thomas Potts. Well, Allen, one of the key receivers and a key senior for them this season. Well, he certainly is. Your, the, the quintessential possession receiver is Charlie Allen. He, he, he just runs good, safe, quarterback-friendly routes, which is what that was, finding the soft area in the zone. That brings up a first down with Devin Richardson on the ground. Nice pickup, very close to another first down, brings up second and short. Well, let's look at the grinding on the line right now uh, as Florida A&M beginning to impose their will at the point of attack. You see the trap clock, clock dips. Look at that hole open up, and that gives the back an opportunity to scoot up through there in Devin Richardson, true freshman, coming out of Tallahassee, doing great work here early on. Second and two from the 40. For Florida A&M, no score between the Rattlers and the Bears. Casey Printers rolling out, looking downfield, can't find a receiver, good coverage, and he's out of bounds. Just mobile enough to not take the loss. Printers is trying to adjust to a brand new offense, transfer from Texas Christian University. And this is not a simple offense for him to learn. No, it's not because you, you've got so many hot routes and hot receivers as we look at the size of the FAMU offensive line going up with, with about a, almost a 30-pound edge Nearly. over the Morgan State defensive front end. As this heat builds and as this game progresses, we'll watch that. A wide open Allen has another first down and is corralled out of bounds by Clifford Johnson. Well, this is just a great pass route by Charlie Allen coming all the way across the field. He's going to find a soft area in that zone. Morgan State in their little too deep coverage again. Half roll by Casey Printers. Getting to the outside. It's going to set up and deliver a strike. Over the underneath coverage. At the six-yard line is Rod Miller as Florida A&M's Gulf Coast offense methodically works its way down the field. And they're attacking the centers. Nothing fancy what they're doing. They're going with slant patterns from the far side. Then they're running post-corner routes to the near side. And it's just, they're having their way right now against the Bears. Printers, this time he's going to run it. Dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Florida A&M. Well, folks, that's just an outstanding drive. There's some, we talked about the progress of Casey Printers. He took what the defense gave him throughout this drive. You know, he didn't try to force ball. Here, watch him set up in the pocket. He really does want to throw, but he tucks it down, and when you've only got 10 yards to go, and you're his size, you can take it to the house. That was a pretty impressive leap, actually. Yeah, he went leap from about three yards out. We know he can throw. We know he can run. Could there be a high jump? potentially in his future well, he's a very versatile young man billy joe's offense strikes first six nothing juan vasquez the all-conference kicker on for the point after and it's seven nothing florida a and m 733 to go in the opening quarter of the riverfront classic rattlers strike first florida a and m takes the early lead seven nothing here in the riverfront classic in cincinnati Oh, it was an impressive, almost flawless drive that covered 80 yards in a little more than two and a half minutes, capped by a seven-yard TD run by Printers. We saw his arm strength. We saw his mobility. I mean, we've just about seen the entire package from Casey Printers already. And Printers, remember, friends, is learning this system. He transferred in from Texas Christian University, but he was able to get in in January, enrolled in school, got involved in the conditioning program and spring practice, and that's made a big difference. Although Billy Joe says he still has a ways to go, and it's scary, but he will get better. But see, the, the, the intricacies of the offense is what he's having problems with. When you, add, when you have talent and you have good skilled players around you, it enhances the learning curve for a quarterback and it's an early season performance. And you get an indication of just what Casey Printers can do. Vasquez set to kick it off as Morgan State will now try and answer. Back to receive from Morgan State, William DeShazzo and William Sherman.
And it's out over the 25 yard line is William Sherman. But let's take a look at the Rattler scoring drive. And as you can see, it was all about Casey Printers mastering the no huddle out of the shotgun going across the middle there. He finds Charles Allen who does yeoman work after the catch. And then once again, Casey Printers on a little half roll with a pass to the near side right here, connecting again with Charlie Allen to move the chains. And then once they're down inside the red zone, talk about taking it to the house. This is Casey Printers. Hey, I don't need your help with this one. It's all on me. And the Rattlers lead by a touchdown. Morgan State now hopeful to march a drive to counter that seven points put up by Florida A&M. LeJominic Washington still in at quarterback. We talked about this earlier. Whom would start, he or Bradshaw, Little John. Washington coming off the injury. Little John has been exciting to watch in the first two games. Well, I mean, he's third in the nation in total offense, averaging over 315 yards per game. He, Little John is leading passer, leading rusher, and he's now a spectator. Second and seven. Shianko in motion, the talented tight end. Washington back to pass, under pressure, gets away from one defender, another one, still on his feet. Nifty piece of running, picks up yardage in what should have been a busted play. Levy he, Brown on the stop. Well, Levy Brown just doesn't miss tackles. And rare is it that you'll see him watch. Just picking his seams inside is Washington. Looks like he was Almost left for dead out there. Alex Fortson forces him into the center of the field. And Brown and Ricky Funches collaborate on the tackle. But Levy Brown is just, he's just a great player. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. And, you know, hopefully reputation does count for something this year. But he's certainly going to make it tough to be an omission on the all-conference team this year. On third and one, the snap is bobbled. And it may very well be a loss of one. Here's the dilemma that Morgan is going to face as long as Washington is in the contest. He hadn't been up under center. He doesn't have a relationship with the center. And here, that's just a snap that goes right through his hands because he hasn't been in the lineup. And against Florida A&M with their quick strike capabilities, boy, if he doesn't figure it out quickly, it could be a very long afternoon for the Bears. Well, that brings on Hiroshland back in his 20 to punt it away. Brown. Florida A&M will have the ball when we return. Rattlers lead it 7-0. Killing 7-0 to Florida A&M. 5.24 to go in the first quarter of the Riverfront Classic. Mark Gray, Lewis Green, Dwayne Ballin. Our flavor of the game, Mark. This is the Riverfront Classic presented by Procter & Gamble, and P&G will donate $350,000 to the respective schools and over a million dollars to historically black colleges in general. Richardson on the ground for Florida A&M. Very little doing and he's met by Clifford Johnson and his teammates. I think that qualifies as a fine philanthropic effort. Not the run, but of course what PG PNG is doing. Richardson with 111 yards last week in that win over Morris Brown. Second and seven from the 28 from Florida A&M. Rattlers come in one and one, having lost to Miami of Florida and beaten Morris Brown. Credits to the air. Receiver drops the ball. That's Miller. Clifford Johnson was escorting him the entire way. Yeah, but Miller had to, he, he was getting pressure, but so too was Casey Printers because there was a blitz that came from the weak side. And if I'm not mistaken, it was Kelvin Williams on a linebacker blitz which kind of disrupted the flow of that play. That brings up third and seven from the 28 for Florida A&M. Printer's now operating out of the shotgun. Under pressure, steps up, flag in the backfield. And I think we're going to have some holding, and I think it's going to be on Shedrick Moat, big number 72. Moten came in not completely 100%, a hyperextended knee. See, why? Let's take a look at the hole right here. A little takedown action, huh? <laughs> Something straight out of the uh, WWE. Well, it's legal if you're Hulk Hogan, but. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or Jimmy Snuka. Of course, I date myself when I say that, the latter. I remember Jimmy Snuka. Holding offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, third down. 
He was super fly without the hat. Moten, number 72, 6'6", 320-pound senior. He did have that type of extended knee, and there was question whether or not he would be able to play today. So safe to say he's not 100 percent. Yeah, his, his his footwork is not there right now, and that could be so, that that might be an area that Morgan wants to try to blitz from to try to exploit that. On third and 19, Prentice drops it off to Richardson out of the backfield, eludes a couple of tacklers before he's ridden down by Carlos Watts. That's a good job of pursuit that time by the Bears because watch this play as it's set up here. It looks as they begin to pull. They're going to have everybody outside. Now watch the back just release into that area right there. And everything is set up. But look, great job of pursuit that time. Potts and a great job in pursuit even better that time by Carlos Watts to track him down and inhibit the first down. Damon Miller back at his 14-yard line to punt away. William Sherman looking for room and runs head on into Marco Williams. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Boy, that's it. <laughs> Welcome to the Riverfront Classic. Florida A&M leads at 7-0. Florida A&M leads Morgan State 7-0. Couple of happy young fans enjoying popcorn. LaJominic Washington has the Morgan State Bears out on the field. Think those kids are potentially considering playing football in the MEAC or some historically black college in the future? Maybe. Morgan State on the short end of those offensive numbers now. The Bears ball at the 40-yard line and very little running room leading the charge was Marco Williams. Well, Dwayne, here's the deal. Morgan's offensive line has a size advantage against Florida A&M, as most offensive fronts do. But they outquick Morgan at the point of attack that time. Donald Hill Ely in his first season, there is a lot of hope for what he's going to do in Morgan. This is a guy who told me he had a vision uh, some years ago when he was in the early stages of his coaching career that he'd have the Morgan job. He felt that this was a unique opportunity for him to bring some of the pride back from years gone by. Loss of two on the previous play. Washington under pressure and goes down. Well, I got to tell you something right now. Who's ever on the left side on the Morgan offensive line just took a whooping. And it's, it's, it's simply put, he left LeJominic Watt there. Watch from this side of your screen, almost unabated that time. The Jeff pressure Green comes, comes in, in and just almost cleans his clock. And see, that's an offensive line situation right there. You got to have your assignment. You got to move your feet. You got to get to them. You know Florida A&M is quick. You got a size advantage. Got to move your feet, get your hands up, or uh, Washington's going to be picking himself up off the turf all afternoon. Third and 19 now from the 31. The Bears going backwards under pressure again. Washington gets it off. That time he was throwing out of desperation. But you know something? He showed pocket presence and discipline to sit in the pocket with the blitz bearing down on him. And he gave his receiver an opportunity in Kevin Dickens to perhaps make the play. Just wasn't happening like that. Again, Florida and him filling the line. Look at the gap. They show pressure. They're doing a good job picking up from the outside. But Leon Scott, they was able to get free and pressure Washington so he wasn't accurate with the pass. Baroshelin in to punt away to Levy Brown, who's back at his 25-yard line. Nice high kick. Brown feels it and gets maybe three yards before mm. he's swallowed up by a number of blue and orange jerseys. Now, I think Morgan's defensive brain trust has to take a page out of what Florida A&M just did. You got to start filling that line of scrimmage. Got to start trying to find blitzes, you know, zone blitzes, mix-up packages to get inside of uh, Printer's Head. This month, NBC launched a new season of great entertainment. Lou Gossett hosts Story of a People Tuesdays at 10. Real Reviews featuring Funny Man Sue Miller airs Thursdays at 8.30. And the new hip-hop video show 3D's Funk Studio, hosted by former NBA star Dennis 3D Scott, is on every Friday at 10 p.m. Keep it on NBC for great entertainment. Casey Printers and the Rattlers of Florida A&M leading at 7-0, 155 to go. Nearly had another receiver, but Dennis Bonga didn't hold on to it. It seems as though Printer and his receivers aren't quite on the same page yet. Well, I, I think I'm going to have to disagree with you with that. I don't think that, uh, I think they're on the same page, but 
it wasn't a good throw. It was low, but that's still a catch you got to make. He, I like what Billy Joe was doing from the press box and calling plays. He opened up on his first couple of drives, starting on the far side of the field with the slant pattern. He starts with the slant pattern from the near side of the field to open up this one. He I is mixing it up. I like this healthy discord in the booth between us. Second and 10, 30-yard line. Printers on a pitch. First down, more room to go. Oh, this is a great one. Rashard Pompey knocked out of bounds finally at the 15-yard line after a big pickup. Well, this is just an outstanding job by Casey Printer showing his versatility. Watch him from the ground level. See, this is you're expecting pass, and he gives you an option look. And this is Pompey. He is the freshman. He is the one from Tallahassee. And look, he gets into the secondary, a couple of nice cuts. His, his receivers do a great job downfield of blocking. And had it not been for Darrell Poland, he would have taken that one into the end zone for the score. Printers, had a man open in the end zone. Marco Juniors couldn't quite get to it. A 53-yard run by Pompey. Well, this is an emotional breaking point, in my opinion, for the Morgan State Bears defense. It's a malign defense that has given up four, 415 yards on the ground coming into this contest. And Florida A&M in the red zone has only not scored a touchdown one time. Watch out. Second and 10 from the 16. Receiver fell down, tried to get back up. Rod Miller did, but he couldn't in time. He and Printers, were, he, Printers had him lasered in for six points. Yeah, he probably connects and does take it to the house if he doesn't lose his footing that time. It did rain here overnight. And I'm sure they had the turf covered, but it was just a little soggy as I walked down on the turf earlier, and he, that probably cost him his footing. Third and 10. Florida a &M looking to add to its 7-0 lead. There was Dennis Banya and about four or five other defenders with him trying to get to the ball. Yeah, but as you can see, they're going right at the soft area of Morgan, which is the center of the field. And Prentice is saying, mm, get out of your break. Help me out. Help me out. You got to help me. Work with me. Work with me now. That brings on Vasquez for field goal. 34-yard attempt. Vasquez, an exceptional field goal kicker. Two of the best in the conference right here. Vasquez adds three more for Billy Joel's Rattlers as Florida A&M takes a 10-0 lead with a 1-11 to go in the first quarter of the Riverfront Classic. And it has been all Florida A&M to this point. They seemingly are able to do exactly what they want to do against Donald Hill's defense right now. They've been able to be, get effective at moving the chains with the slant patterns from either side of the field. They've attacked downfield with the screen passes in the center of the field. And then they come with the option, and they pick up 53 yards in the most significant offensive play of this contest. So they're almost clicking on all cylinders if you're a fan, you fan. If you're Donald Hill Ely, that 53-yard run withstanding, you still feel pretty good about what you've done defensively so far on the ground against the run. Yeah, against the run, you feel somewhat okay. Problem is in the air. The bottom line is the offense has got to make something happen right now for the Bears. Now, I understand that the experience and the comfort zone in the offense for the Bears right now rests with the Dominic Washington. But to this point in the season, uh, Bradshaw Littlejohn has made big plays. And I'm just wondering how much farther behind they can fall before you start getting to a guy like Little John, who has proven that he may be a little raw, but he can make things happen. Kevin Dickens and William Sherman back to receive the kick of Juan Vasquez. 10 nothing. Florida A&M, which came into this game 1-1, one and one. Morgan State 0-2. Oh well, you know something? After last week's game, Levy Brown was quoted in the Tallahassee Democrat. And, and remember, last week's game, they beat Morris Brown 64-6 uh, in Tallahassee. And he said, we're going into the conference next week. You haven't seen anything yet. To this point, if you're a Bear fan, you're scared to see what lurks ahead. Sherman has the ability to really break this open, number 11, if he gets the opportunity. 
4-4 in the 40-yard dash, averaging 48 yards on the kick off return. There he is, up to the 20, across to the 35-yard line. And folks, Levy Brown made the tackle. <laughs> it's your starting safety, your, your punt return specialist, and again, a glaring on mission from the all-conference team a season ago. If he doesn't make this tackle right about here, one last cut to make, but you can't do it. So 11 in white took down 11 in blue. Boy, how fast Sherman gets downfield. So Morgan State will take over trailing 10-0. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. LeJominic Washington still in at quarterback. Remember, he's coming off of arthroscopic surgery, so he's trying to get his sea legs as they were back. Fusante Shenko in motion. We haven't heard from him yet. They keep it on the ground, and Florida A&M is there to allow no more than three yards on the pickup. Well, you know something? Donald Hill is a protege of Joe Taylor from Hampton University. And right now, this offense <laughs> it's remarkably similar to what Coach Taylor does down at Hampton. And they got a big contest this evening against uh, Howard University on the shores of the Chesapeake in Virginia. Wayne Lacey on that last carry. We're inside of 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Moving along the line, there are flags, and we will bring this one back. I wonder, was there encroachment? But and looking at Morgan's offense, though, the way that they want to run off tackle and create the cutback lane. All sides, defense, five-yard penalty, second down. That's the first time. Now watch. Florida a has been anticipating the snap count all game. This time, good hard count by LeJominic Washington to well, jump them got, off sides. He certainly got John Edwards to make a move. <laughs> and a cast of thousands. That brings up second and one from the 44. 20 seconds left to go in the first quarter. LeJominic Washington with Shianko once again in motion. Second man through is Stallings, and he picks up the first down. Well, at least the Bears, despite their offensive woes as we come up on the end of the uh, first quarter, have been able to finally get into FAMU territory, and right now, Morgan is just looking for a big play to get themselves back into it. Both teams unable to score on their opening drives, and Florida A&M was able to get it going, scoring a touchdown later, adding a Juan Vasquez field goal. And LeJominic Washington and Morgan State trying to find some answers. Donald Hill Ely's team trails 10-0 at the end of one. Network CEO Willie Gary, the noted trial attorney, is hosting the first annual Willie Gary Classic on September 28th in Jacksonville, Florida. It's Edward Waters College taking on Gary's alma mater, Shaw University. Tickets are on sale and moving. Seniors and students can buy one, get one free. Call Ticketmaster today. And speaking of moving, that's exactly what the Morgan Bears under LeJominic Washington are doing right now, finally in the Rattler territory. Stallings on the ground, has an opening, gets some running room before he's met by Levy Brown. But he picks up a nice gain on first down from Morgan State. The, ulic the ubiquitous Levy Brown. Stallings, three touchdown rushing so far this year. He's also number one in receiving for Morgan State. And... If he could play a couple of games ago back, had he not dropped a big touchdown pass against Gardner-Webb in Boiling Springs, North Carolina, Morgan's probably at least 1-1, one one, if not 2-0. and oh. His seven-yard pickup leads to second and three from the 43. Stallings this time is met by Ricky Funches, who says you will not get plus gain on this play. Well, they outquick Morgan's offensive front at the point of attack, but we've got some laundry on the turf in the secondary. See, watch. They, too many guys at the line of scrimmage just get too much pressure into the backfield. Now, he's not able to get to the outside. Florida A&M putting eight guys in the box in that particular situation. And uh, Washington didn't do a good job recognizing it, or he, d he doesn't have the ability to uh, check out of the play into something new. That flag came rather late. Holding. Offense. A penalty has declined. It's third down. And by that, I mean Stallings was already on the ground. Right. 
and then the flag flew. And it came way from the uh, from the back judge too. Donald Hill Ely, Billy Joel told us he has a lot of respect for young Hill Ely and what he thinks he's going to create in Baltimore at Morgan State. Yeah, he did say earlier, he said Morgan would knock off some teams this year in the MEAC, and he hoped that they didn't start that today. Hill Ely, 1991 graduate of, Virgi of Virginia Union, served as offensive coordinator for Morgan State in 2001, has installed a certain discipline that the players at Morgan State had not had before. They believe in him. Yeah, church on Sundays, uh, active in the community, around by the campus. And uh, he said, and it was interesting to note that despite their uh, travel travails on yesterday, they, they seemed to be really even keel prior to the game. That's a reflection of that man. His Morgan State Bears trail it 10 nothing. Inside of 14 minutes to go in the second quarter, out of the shotgun is Washington looking downfield. Has a receiver in and out of the hands of T.J. Stallings, who was coming out of the backfield to catch that one. Well, it was a pass that was behind him, and you got to chalk this one up the timing. But it's still a catch that T.J. Stallings has to make. I mean, when you're second in the MEAC in receptions, that's one that, you know, it, it's almost in your bread basket. And Stallings a big-time player. It was his touchdown reception last year that gave them perhaps the biggest upset in the conference over North Carolina A&T. So here are the Bears, fourth and six at the 45-yard line. You have to go. Electing to go for it. Yep, I Washington like it. out of the shotgun. You like this, Mark? Mm -hmm. oh, Under pressure, he got it off. Nice defensive work for Florida A&M. That, <laughs> that's a famous number in Florida, number 21. Edward Kwaku on the stop. And it's good to see he's in his zone. Watch. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Kwaku against V.T. Sherman. And he's not able to haul it in. See, Washington threw that a little bit off of his back foot, got too much air up under it. I mean, if he puts a little more juice on it and is able to lead the receiver they got a chance to take it to the house and do those numbers surprise you very much so i mean I, uh, you expect florida a m to come in and and have success with the gulf coast passing attack but for morgan to put up a donut in the air through the first um, 14 minutes of this game shocking on first down Richard Pompey, he was met by Clifford Johnson. Pompey grew up just five blocks away from Florida A&M's campus. He's a local guy from Tallahassee, 5'10", 191 pound freshman. Very talented running back. Second and six after that pickup of four. They keep it on the ground again to Pompey who churns out yardage right in the heart of the Morgan State defensive unit, very close to a first down. Well, again, when you've got guys like Shedrick Moten up front, you've also got guys like Fletcher Williams and Kenneth Jones in the middle, you're able to get surge at the point of attack, and there was nothing fancy about that. That was just smash mouth football. On third and one, there's a first down and a little more for Paul Sharp, and there is a flag on the field. Another late flag coming in from a receiver in the secondary. Excuse me, from an official in the secondary. I think we got an illegal participation call against Morgan. Maybe they had 12 men on the field. Consulting with Casey Printers. And see, those are just mental mistakes. Prior to the snap, illegal substitution on the defense, five-yard penalty will result in a first down. Mental mistakes, uh, communications issues. And those are the things that drive coaches crazier more than anything else. See, Morgan right now is averaged, <laughs> averaging like 10 penalties in the conference at this point timeout in the season. Morgan State, that's their first charge timeout. What you have is residue that is left over. Teams just know how to lose. They know how to beat themselves. And that's what Donald Hill Ely is facing right now, changing the mindset of the Bears. Casey Printers and the Rattlers lead the Bears 10-0.
one nothing. Let's check in with Lewis Breeden. Hey guys, we know about Casey Prentice. He's an impressive quarterback. He's a guy that has all the talents to be a good one. But one thing you know, you need good, great protection from the offensive line. That first series, it wasn't a good series for the offensive line of Florida and m When they came off the field, they've got a mouthful from the offensive line coach, Coach Black. It is amazing for the, what a few kind words can do for an offensive line. They came out, back out in the next series, and they played well since then. Back up to you guys. And that gentleman that Casey Printers was talking about has a unique tie to the Morgan State program. We'll set that story up after, the, after this play. First and 10 from the 40-yard line of Morgan State, Florida A&M leading 10-0. The Riverfront Classic. Cutting is Pompey, who's really beginning to find a rhythm as he runs behind that talented and huge offensive line. Kenneth, Kenneth Jones and Tellus Rogers do a great job opening up the, the center of the field and then he just does work by cutting on the dime into the center of the bear defense and they have no answers for the running game right now second and two printers this time through the air drops it off to pompey who was out of the backfield and he's corralled down boy that was a nice play that time by uh albert, albert gamble. gamble yeah one of the better linebackers. Well, watch this play set up here. Again, it's a little delay, and watch the back just release into the flat. He takes it, heads to the sideline, and Campbell tracks him down. But again, you're in Vasquez territory already. First and 10 from the 22. Printers on the keeper. Gets it down close to the 14-yard line. Looked like his bell might have been rung just a little bit. He got up and shook his helmet. <laughs> no, I think I think that's because he rang the bell of Don Rico Lewis, one of those undersized DBs <laughs> for Morgan, who tried to step up and clock him and ended up getting his clock clean. Prentice is 6'3", 208. He's back to pass on second down. Pass Pompey who picks up another first down as the Rattlers move ever closer to the end zone. That was Mark. Well, that's Junius coming out right now. And I guess Florida A&M is going to line it up and go with the big power package right here. Pompey in the backfield. Number 30, the up back, gets the call over the right side into the end zone. Six more for Florida A&M. Straight power football that time. They go right at Morgan, over the left side, behind Fletcher Witts, Williams, and Shedrick Moten. And uh, Morgan's in big trouble now. So Pompey showing, he, he, yeah, he, he, we, we heard about him from Coach Joe early in the week, and he certainly lived up to advanced billing. Very talented young man, 5'10", 191 pounds, a freshman. Vasquez on for the extra point. Florida A&M now goes up 17-0 over Morgan State. On this day, it's Pompeii. 11.08 to go in the second quarter. Florida A&M needs to be cooled off the offense, heating up, leading 17-0, 11.08 to go. Richard Pompey with the last six points for them. Well, watch these big nasties right here. Going to create a hole, and he's just going to barrel over tacklers and take it into the house. Watch it right here. You got great trap blocking right there. He finds the hole and just carries a couple of defenders into the end zone for the score, and Morgan's in big trouble now. Pompey, that four-yard run of those 55 yards, he accounted for 31 of those. A seven-play drive, 235, and it appears that Billy Joe has found his man. Well, if you're Donald Hill, you're facing a big decision right here in terms of you know you want to get Washington some game situation, but you're down 17 points, and you haven't shown the ability to stop the opposition on offense. you got to jumpstart yours. So Morgan State with Kevin Dickens looking to come out with something. Dickens gets it across the 34, 35 yard line before he stopped. Well, it'll be interesting to see. And Bradshaw Littlejohn appears to be going up under center right now. 
So now the change at quarterback for Donald Hill Ely. He's bringing out Bradshaw Littlejohn, number seven. Six, three, 258-pound freshman. Actually, Little John is playing running back. It's going to line up as a running back, and LeJominique Washington remains quarterback. So two quarterbacks in the backfield. Should be interesting. In motion is Sean Cope. Little John gets the call from the setback position, and he picks up maybe five yards. Little John is so talented. He's a transfer from Michigan State. 496 yards passing so far for him this year. Three touchdowns. And that's 6'3", 258 pounds, though. He's a bruiser of a running back. Yeah, he certainly is. Leads the team in rushing right now and passing. Opens up a whole potential for a lot of things here. Second and six from the 40. Little John over the right side. Makes a couple of defenders pay. Gets the first down. And this is a fellow we expected to see, frankly, earlier in the game, even joining LeJominic as he is now in the backfield. Well, I, I really kind of thought he would be up under center. I thought that maybe um, despite the fact that he's unfamiliar with the offense, he makes plays, but everybody else says that they watch tapes. They saw that he wasn't disciplined enough to sit in the pocket and to make his reads, and uh, that's what you want your quarterback to do. First and 10, Washington to Stallings, who doesn't get very far before Edward Kwaku who finds him and stops him. And when you bring Little Jaw into the game as a running back, it allows T.J. Stallings to go back into the slot position where he's played for the last three years while Ali Culpepper was at the running back position. And what that does is it gives you another offensive weapon in a different spot. See, Stallings is much more effective, in my opinion, at going against the defensive back than he is at trying to handle the linebacker. 9.36 left in the second quarter. 17-0, Florida A&M leads it, flags on the play. And we gotta find a way. Well, let's, let's get the call from the official. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty be second down. Morgan making mistakes that a team normally makes uh, in their first or second week of the season. You notice how controlled and calm Donald Hill Ely is on the sidelines. That belies a burning intensity on his part, but it's the way he wants his players to comport themselves. He wants them to be really focused and understand that extremes and emotion serve you no worth at all on a football field. Well, as long as you're composed, it increases your level of focus. And if you're going off the deep end, it's difficult to focus. Second and 11, Washington looking through the air. Intercepted. Well, Ricky Funches had it for a moment. Boy, that wasn't, that wasn't exactly a smart decision by a little, excuse me, by uh, LeJominic Washington. He had ample protection in the pocket, and he just tries to throw it into uh, a two-deep zone, and uh, Ricky Funches had it. No, he doesn't. T.J. Stallings turned into a defensive back on that play. See, watch. He's going to force this pass. There's a slant route, and Funches jumped the coverage or jumps in front of the receiver, and he had the ball in his bread basket, and he couldn't hang on. Levy Brown and the Rattlers trying to stop Morgan on this drive. Third and 11, under pressure. He gets it away, and for the first time, Vashante Shianko has a reception in this game. What? First down, Morgan State. Got to use the big fella. FAMU has the speed on the outside. Watch Shianko come and just run into that center of the field, and he's just going to be a safe, quarterback-friendly pass route. Sits in the soft area of the zone. Picks up the first down. 6'5", 240-pound senior from Laurel, Maryland. Ball now at the 41-yard line of Florida A&M. Rattlers out to a 17-0 lead. Washington and the Bears would certainly like to get on the board in the second quarter. He goes down under three or four Rattlers. Well, they filled the line, and they had to look blitz. And when your quarterback is in a shotgun and he can see that, Watch it. You've got four guys that are unblocked. How does that happen and somebody not get open on a screen route or a flat pass? That's the, the, the offensive line right now for Morgan is really letting them down. They've not given Washington an opportunity to really sit back in the pocket and survey uh, adequately on a consistent basis. 
Washington just 17 yards passing. 7.54 to go, the Riverfront Classic, fourth installment of this. Washington to the air, has a receiver open, and Sherman cannot hang on to it. Perfect play call, perfect pass, and Sherman doesn't haul it in. And Washington is picking himself up. Look, he's got three yards on the defensive back that time. Look, great strike. This is a perfect pass. Sherman's got to handle that. And, I mean, this is one of the few times that you're going to break into a FAMU secondary. And Shedrick Copeland was burned. Washington got up very slowly after that. Jeff Green, who's been making life miserable for him so far this afternoon, collided with him shortly after he released the ball. So Washington is probably going to feel it tomorrow. Wow. Though you can't make mistakes like those against a team like Florida A&M. Third down. He's going to the air again. This one is That's picked off. intercepted by Levy Brown, his third of the season. Well, it's like he was lurking back there in coverage. And the ball, once again, had too much air on it, under it. And watch. He tried to loft it over the DB, and that's going to allow Levy Brown to track it, get the radar up, and haul it in. Levy Brown and the Rattlers turn the Bears away once again. They lead it 17-0. Levy Brown showing that uh, he's ready to pick up right where he left off last season, just out there playing center field. And we'll watch it right here. Brown is outside your picture. He's just going to come over and play center field and make a break on the ball. See? Ball's out there. The receiver has a step on it, but Levy Brown just climbs the ladder, gets one foot, both feet down. Great job by Levy Brown. Very talented football player, leading to more frustration for LeJominic Watson. And, and I'm wondering, is he hurting right now? Well, he's been banged around a lot. That turns the ball over to the Florida A&M offensive unit and Casey Printers. Printers out of the shotgun on first and 10 from the 23. And it's Pompey over the left side, who's done a good job on the ground. Lewis Breeden, you have played on defenses that were good and some that were not so good. What about a situation like this for Morgan State where suddenly you're out on the field a lot? Well, the first thing you got to do is get the offense to really stain some drives, uh, the kind of drive they had in the last series where they really moved the football down the field. You don't necessarily have to score. You don't need a field goal or a touchdown, but just maintain some drives to keep your defense off the field. Hey, guys, let's keep in mind also because at the beginning of the ballgame, we talked about that long flight, that flight that uh, had troubles in Baltimore finally got here in Cincinnati. It took him a long time. That can have an effect on him also in the second half of the ball game. So, Lewis, when you've got a team that's down right now, like the Bears are, what can you do to jumpstart them? Do you do you think about bringing in the backup quarterback who's had some success early well, in the year? Well, they're trying some things now. You just try almost anything to get your offense on the football field and get your defense on. The one thing that you you, you notice is that they're they're outmatched as far as weight and strength and sidewise. So what you want to do with the defensive line, especially, you want to run slants, you want to run as many stunts as possible, and try and get pressure on Prentice to get their offense on the ball field. Thank you, Lewis. Those words being played out on the field right now as Morgan State is simply trying to find a way to stop Florida A&M, which is beginning to resemble the unstoppable machine. Well, and Lewis made a great point. Morgan's got uh, showing signs of some fatigue right now on the defensive front, and I'm sure that has a lot to do with the fact that they had uh, traveling trepidation yesterday. <laughs> Richard Pompey getting close to 100 yards rushing on second down. Prentiss decides to run, and he has another first down before he scampers out of bounds. Well, it's amazing to watch Casey Prentiss just shred the Bear defense because right now, with the fatigue level and the speed, Casey Prentiss is going to show you he's fast. He's, he's really faster than the linebackers right there. Morgan does a good job with the pressure that time, especially uh, coming from number 54 there, Carlos Watts, but he's not able to track him down. Printers, time to throw, has Marcus Allen, who beats the defender, cuts back up, he loses the ball, and appears to get back onto it. So after a gain, he loses a couple. Well, you know something? We talked about Morgan needing some breaks in order to compete in that game. That was the first break. 
and they weren't able to capitalize on it. So they, they are just a little sluggish right now, are the Bears. And it appears to be a bad break for the Bears, as you saw Albert Gamble on the ground writhing in pain. See Charles Allen with a nice cut there, and Gamble, great strip. Allen just knows how to find the football. And let's see if we can. Gamble is down, being attended to at the moment. 6'1", 235-pound junior from Sumter, South Carolina. Donald Hill Ely does not want to see this. Gamble is one of his leaders out on the field, walking off under his own power. That's always a good sign. Hopefully it's nothing more than getting his bell rung or, or fatigue at this particular time because sometimes after you make a strip like that, you can land awkwardly. And uh, he's holding that shoulder area. Five twenty-seven to go. Let's see if we can check it out one more time from a lower angle here. That's number 40 Gamble who will be coming into your picture shortly with the strip. And maybe, well, I'm not going to speculate, but maybe he might have jammed the shoulder or something. Printer somehow gets away from the crowd, gets open, has a receiver. Great concentration by receiver and quarterback. Six more for Florida A&M. Well, <laughs> I'm sold on Casey Printers now. Wow, <laughs> that's a great play. I mean, buying himself some time, surveying, and staying with Dennis Bonga, and then Bonga does a great job with the tightrope back in the back of the end zone to haul it in. That's a great play. Casey Printers getting better seemingly as each series progresses. Point well taken. That's quality stuff right there. That's Sunday afternoon stuff. Vasquez, who was near perfect in point after attempts, makes it 24 0. Florida AM with 5.04 to go in the second quarter of the Riverfront Classic. The Rattlers have bitten the Bears a number of times. Back after these messages. Casey Printers adds seven more, 24 nothing. The Rattlers lead, and Printers was marvelous on that last scoring play. Well, he certainly has been, and you're just beginning to take a look at just one of the many gifts that he has. He rolls out of the pocket, lofts a strike into the corner of the end zone, over <laughs> underneath coverage, again in front of the two-deep zone coverage, and that's just a perfect pass and a great reception. I mean, heck, you could catch that pass. Eight plays, 77 yards on the drive. Printers was three for three, 46 yards passing and 12 yards rushing and the touchdown pass. He did. Charlie, you know, it's Charlie Allen, the receiver's getting next to him, says, let me sit next to the quarterback <laughs> here. Hey, you know I'm out there too. Right. <laughs> Especially when we're down in the red zone. <laughs> Reminds so, me of the days when our boy Jay Walker was at Howard on those rollouts. Speaking of Jay. Was Jay nimble enough to make a play like that? Jay was fairly nimble. I thought Jay He's not as nimble as he is now on the golf course. <laughs> Jay and Charlie Neal, of course, will have a game this evening at Arkansas Pine Bluff. That ought to be an interesting matchup. Pete Richardson leads Southern to Arkansas Pine Bluff. And not, I can't recall a season where Pete Richardson, the head coach of Southern, was 0-2 after two weeks. So this is a big game for the uh, for the Jaguars, who have a great receiver. So now Morgan State finds itself in a very deep hole, 24-0. Vasquez set the kickoff. William DeShazzo, number 20, is back along with Kevin Dickens. It's going to be DeShazzo at the 11-yard line. And he's met pretty hard by Chris Gilchrist, who's been doing a, quite a job on special teams for Florida A&M this afternoon. Well, I'm anxious to see who's going to take the helm of the offense and, and Coach Hill is staying with uh, the Dominic Washington. I mean, if they have any desires on getting back into this contest, they're going to have to find a way to get the ball to not only uh, Shanko the tight end, but TJ Stallings has a strike. You know, you're looking at a 14 point swing over the last drive. You had the miss of the touchdown catch potentially by uh, by BT Sherman. And then you have Florida A&M going down the field and scoring the touchdown. That's a 14-yard swing and a drive. So LeJominic Washington and his Morgan State Bears teammates
first and 10 at the 20. Under pressure, he gets it away and into the waiting arms of Levy Brown. Interception number four on the season, number two in this game. And, you know, if they're saying that uh, Bradshaw Little John doesn't sit in the pocket long enough to make good decisions, what's LeJomnick Washington doing right now? I mean, that's just a, that's a bad pass. You know, it, 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 uh, Florida a and still in the basic cover, too. You know, and this is where Levy Brown can just sit back, play center field, and make a break on the ball. So out comes the dangerous Gulf Coast offense with 4.46 to go, courtesy the Washington mistake. Printers out of the shotgun, under pressure. This time he goes down. Andre Williams that time, DB. Good job Morgan does getting pressure from each side. And Williams getting up slowly. You notice what Lewis Breeden was speaking of earlier. The fatigue is so evident. And I'm just wondering, is that Shedrick Moten that's down on the field? Remember Moten, that hyperextended knee. Well, he was questionable coming into the game. I believe that's Gudea Morris. Another one of the big nasties up front for the Rattlers. It is Morris. It is Morris. The junior from St. Petersburg, 6'5", 295 pounds, number 75. Well, this is one way for Morgan State's defensive unit to get a breather in. Yeah, because <laughs> Lewis Breeden hit the uh, nail on the head the last time we went down to him. He said, like Morgan State, they're all behind. Their offense is basically a running football team. It is going to be very difficult for them to come back with the rain, that this field gets wet, and try and throw the football on the soggy field. So they need to do something right away, especially if the rain holds off beginning of the first of the uh, third quarter. Lewis, noticing LeJominic Washington offensively, from a defensive standpoint, he sets back so far in that shotgun, nearly 10, sometimes 12 yards back. As a defensive player, what does that allow? you to do? Wayne, I could barely uh, hear, make out what you said, man. I've got this uh, uh, loudspeaker all in my ear here. But the biggest thing that Morgan State uh, really needs to do, is that they don't need Florida A&M to score another point uh, in this first half. It would be devastating because the ability to come back from playing a, an outstanding ball club is very difficult. Tough defense, solid offense that, that can get you back in the ball game. But already they're way down. It's going to be very difficult for them to come back in this ball game. Way down is an understatement, Lewis. Totally yards 508 yards 308 yards to nearly fit while his Rattler teammates continue their march second and 13 at the 46 yard line of Morgan State printers has Bonga who caught the last touchdown pass just out of bounds well the, two years ago it was Quinn Gray to Jaquay Nunley and Nunley ended up as the all-time leading receiver in the history of uh, 1AA football. It seems like that type of relationship is developing between Casey Printers and Dennis Bonga. You know, the guy that he's looking for to make that pass, to make the reception for him in critical situation. What a nice grab. Excellent concentration by Marco Junius for a first down. Wow, he didn't make it easy. <laughs> but it's it was a chip exciting. Drill. It, it was certainly a is. Drill. A one man temp drill right here. Not exactly a tight spiral slant pattern once again, but he got the, his hands on the ball, was able to deflect it, give himself an opportunity to regain possession. And he had Daryl Poland, he really draped all over him. That sets up a first down at the 29-yard line of Morgan State. Florida A&M able to move the ball on the ground, through the air, virtually at will. This time they stay on the ground to Pompey, and he is corralled for one of the few times this afternoon, leading the way was Kelvin Williams. And Lewis is right. The wind has picked up just a little bit here. The rain is coming in from the southern part of the region. Swiftly moving in, as a matter of fact. Auditioning for the weather channel, are we? <laughs> <laughs> there you see the ominous skies that Lewis referred to. You know what's next after that, don't you? Second and nine from the 28 for Florida A&M. They stay on the ground, and Pompey breaks one tackle, but can't break the second. Well, again, they're just getting great surge once again. This time they come back to the near side of the field, and they're going over uh, Moten. Fletcher.
Roger Williams. Watch. Look at that trap. Look at that hole right there. Got a tackle up in there pulling. And Cedric Moten opening up holes, cleaning folks out of there. And uh, Pompey's able to just pick up sizable real estate. That leads to third and three at the 22. Printers to Vanga. Nice movement, another first down, and you are right. That's Butch and Sundance for Florida a &M. Indeed. Uh, hey, Dennis, you, uh, obviously they've got a great relationship working in practice, but this is impressive arm strength right here. See, Poland had a shot, and the ball was just whistled past him, and then Baga turns the corner and is able to find his way down into the secondary. Wow! Looking for Baga in the end zone. He was defended by Sam Massey. Both jumped. Ball went over the head of both men. And I do realize we have a little bit more than a full half of football in the third game of the season for Florida A&M. But this is scary because Prentice is going to find team double teaming Vonga down the stretch. And that's going to open up everybody else. That was the first incomplete pass and eight tries for him. And Morgan finally intercepts the pass. Something Ball intercepted by Morgan State Fine. in the end zone. And that, that's a bad read. Now, Casey Printers, which is he had this one back. We'll talk about it in greater detail after the break. What do you know? It turns out Printers is mortal after all. He and the Rattlers still lead it 24 0. Trailing 24 0, but had one of its few breaks a moment ago. Daryl Poland picks off a pass and gives Donald Hill Ely's offense an opportunity to try and put something on the board. But again, Poland is the beneficiary that time of a bad read by Casey Printers. He had Charlie Allen on the post, wide open in the back of the end zone. They tried to force it in the general direction of Marco Junius. And I think that's what they're talking about right now. Charlie Allen saying, look, you got to find me. I know how to get open. I know how to find the soft areas of the zone. And I got good hands. Throw me the ball. <laughs> With those inflections, that's the way he related to something, him, right? Something like that. Thank you, Rich Little. <laughs> first and 10, roll out for Little John. And he has a first down back up field near the 40-yard line. There's a bit of excitement for Morgan State's offensive unit. Well, you know, they needed a jump start, and maybe he was holding this as his trump card. Look how big the kid is. He also is gifted with great speed. Remember, he played linebacker or was recruited as a linebacker to Michigan State University, and there he just gets into the secondary, barreling over people, and is able to administer some punishment, which is what the Rattlers have been doing to the Bears for the balance of the afternoon. And he has replaced LeJominate Washington at quarterback. 131 to go on the half. Little John looking to the air, nearly intercepted. That one was short. Well, he had two receivers running the same kind of route on the same side of the field. So that brought all the defense over there. But the shorter receiver was B.T. Sherman, was open in the flat. He didn't go to him. I think there's some confidence issues in Sherman after dropping those passes because Sherman has had a rough afternoon in the passing game. We're at Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio, the Riverfront Classic. Florida A&M leading Morgan State 24-0. Brad Littlejohn from Morgan State is sacked, and there are flags in the backfield. Jeff Green coming up with the play. There's going to be holding, I think, against the Bears, and I think it's going to be against Wesley Charles. Yep, and that's, and that's pretty bad. You, you, you couldn't have a worse play. Not only do you give up a sack, Holding but you're also offense. That penalty has declined. It's third down. You give up a sack, and you're holding on the same play. There's something wrong, Coach Hill. Something wrong. 117 left in the first half. Mark Gray, Lewis Breeden, Dwayne Ballin. Welcome to another Saturday of Black College Football on NBC. Morgan State trying to get something going, but it is difficult. They're playing the reigning champions of their conference. Brad Little John decides to run, gets back to the original line of scrimmage where he is met by Joe Sanders. Well, that was a straight quarterback draw, and Fam U takes out. a timeout. It is a first charge timeout. So Fam U is going to take a timeout and force Morgan to have to make a decision whether or not to punt which is what I'm sure they'll do. 
And you talk about major wholesale adjustments that now have to be made by Morgan. But to me, it starts with the offensive line. Offensive line has, just, has been bad, you know, to put it mildly. And, and Washington's aching just a little bit because they haven't been able to block anybody. And Bradshaw Littlejohn hasn't been able to sit back and uh, look down for success in the passing game either. It's a familiar scenario, unfortunately, for Morgan State. Florida A&M leading this series 14-3. Morgan State hasn't beaten Florida A&M since 1994. On Mondays, a spiritual impact on NBC, and on Wednesdays, it's 10 p.m., The Lounge, your family's urban television network, the place for positive programming. The entire family can watch NBC. There's a youngster enjoying, is that co is that popcorn, french fries? Look, well, okay, is mom going to eat it or is the little one going to eat it? I don't know. I think they, it's a collaborative culinary effort there. There's a lady. Don't forget tonight at 7.30 p.m. here on NBC, Southern versus Arkansas Pine Bluff. Charlie Neal, Jay Walker, and Nicole Watson will have that game for you. Pete Richardson's Southern team should be exciting. Michael Hayes, great receiver to watch. So Morgan State elects to punt it away. Levy Brown will not field it. It is out of bounds at the 12-yard line. That's where Casey Printers and company will take over with 43 seconds left to go in the half and a comfortable lead. Interesting dilemma facing Billy Joe, leading by like three scores. Do you decide, let's go for the juggler now, or do you put it on ice and come back out in the second half to try and pick up where you left off? Remember what he told us when we chatted with him before the game. He's still trying to figure out which team he has stewardship of right now. Remember, they lost to Miami 63-17 season opener. Granted, the nation's number one Division I team. And then they beat Morris Brown 64-6. So which is it? It's somewhere in the middle there. It really is because, you know, that they scored more points on uh Wow. A very interesting play. The ball bounced around. Printers had a receiver for a moment. Contact was made. And Printers is, is, is aching just a little bit. And it's interesting. We were just talking about decisions by Joe. How long do you go with people? Granted, it's just the second quarter. And now Printers is limping a bit. Yeah, he's hurt. Wow. How big could this be if it's something major when you're leading by 24? I appreciate the attack mode, but boy, that's a dangerous circumstance right there. And, and believe you me, if something major is wrong with uh, Casey Printers, there'll be some second guessing going on. <laughs> second guessing is as intense for uh, FAMU as it is for Florida State and Tallahassee. That determined look on his face He's holding probably a lot in right now, favoring an ankle. So Reggie Hayes comes in, hands off to Richard Pompey, who's over 100 yards or very close so far in the game. Now, I'll be shocked if Florida a and snaps one more time. Those are first half numbers, nearly 200 yards passing for Casey Printers. And, and over 50% in terms of his... Uh, Percentage. Now the man in now, a senior, 6'4", 195 pound Reggie Hayes, does know the system. Billy Joe trusts him, has confidence in him. Timeout, Morgan State. That's their second charge timeout. Morgan State takes a timeout, but Billy Joe is probably more than a bit concerned right now as Printers lips to the end zone. You know, I got to give credit where credit is due. You know, you often talk about officiating when they're making controversial decisions, but this is a marvelous crew. I think you got to take your hats off to Johnny Greer and, the, you know, his job as supervisor of officials here in the MEAC. It's the caliber of officiation is dramatically improved. So what is Donald Hill Ely trying to do at this juncture? He calls a timeout, and there are 18 seconds left to go in the half. He's got one timeout left as well, so what he does is he's trying to force Florida A&M to have to snap the ball at least one more time, which gives him a chance to make a mistake, which could perhaps give him a chance for a, a, a quick score. Third and seven from the 17-yard line, Florida A&M. Reggie Hayes replacing the just-injured Casey Printers 
and it's Pompey around the left side. Morgan State pursues. Sekou Goins, one of those who helps to bring him down. And the Bears are going to force Florida A&M to punt. Well, let's take a look at Casey Printer's hey, Morgan the State injury. Timeout is their third and final timeout of the half. Well, it looks like somebody had his leg. It's one of those top and bottom hits. You know, his body went in one direction, and his ankle was kind of in the other, and uh, he comes up the worst for wear. And uh, another See, thing. Gadea Mars, who was hurt a couple of series back, now all of a sudden, the Red Cross becomes a concern for Billy Joe. Boy, this suddenly become a costly first half of domination in the Rattler Nation. Florida A&M will now punt away. William DeShazzo waiting at his 30-yard line. That was close to being blocked. It probably was tipped. DeShazzo will let it bounce after some deliberation. And it's going to be down at the 38-yard line of Morgan State. That will end the half. And Florida A&M leads it 24-0 at the half. Lewis Breeden, your impressions of that first half. Hey, guys, an impressive start uh, for Florida A&M. They've done everything they wanted to in this ballgame, running and passing the football. They're ahead 24-0, and defensively, this is a shutout. This is smash-mouth football. They've done exactly what they want to uh, as well. The coaching staff and everyone has to be very pleased for Florida A&M the way they played. Morgan State, on the other half, on the other side of it, they have to be disappointed because offensively, they did not control and maintain the football long enough to try and do anything. And on defense, hey, defensively, the defensive backs, Wide receivers open, and Prentice, you go back to him for Florida a and He is an outstanding quarterback, and if they're going to, uh, Morgan State has to do anything to come back in this football game, they have to stop the offense of Florida a and and Prentice throwing the football. Well, for Florida a and they are worried about the health of Messer Printers, and Morgan State, they have work to do. They trail 24-0 at halftime. The team with the transfer, Derek Watson, was very impressive here on uh, NBC last week and Bethune Cookman and my favorite quarterback in the MEAC with all due respect to Casey Prentice and Bradshaw Littlejohn is Alan Suber the best quarterback pound for pound in one double A in my opinion and then of course you've got Grambling State and Doug Williams looking to get back on top in the swag and Alcorn State faces a MEAC opponent in Hampton at the um, uh, Whitney Young Classic in New York next week. When you look at the top part of that, and you see Hampton there at number six, the first three teams of Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference teams, is that the dominant conference this season? Well, to this point in the season, they have been in non-conference competition. MEAC teams have faced five outside opponents, and they've won four games. I'm interested next week when you and I get a chance to go down to uh, Tuskegee, Alabama to watch Tuskegee take on Miles. That Alabama State team is uh, going to be a force under Coach L.C. Cole. Tennessee State and Jackson State ought to be quite interesting. And Southern against Arkansas Pine Bluff is almost a make-or-break kind of game for Pete Richardson and the Jaguars at this point in the season. If you ask me, it's a must-win situation for the Jaguars this evening here on NBC. And that game comes up, as you mentioned, at 7 p.m. tonight here on NBC. Nicole Watson, Charlie Neal, and Jay Walker will have... Tackler. And Cincinnati, that's just the beginning.
the Florida A&M University Marching Band. First, the drum majors. The notorious nine. Cincinnati, the hundred is here for you. We're still fly. Trick love those kids. It's hot in here. We're balling. Hundred. Give it up. It's Nelly time.
said, hunger. Build me something to try. Mr. President, here's your SUV. Procter and Gamble, Riverfront Classic. Everything you heard about the Marching 100 is true. We didn't change a thing. In other words, it's time now to This concludes our halftime performance. We're back at post game. Our band staff under the direction of Dr. Jeannie White, charged us being associate director of bands. Lindsay B. Sausage, assistant director of bands and arrangers. Dr. Sheila L. Jeans, assistant director of bands and director of the professions. Mr. Combo Bailey, assistant director. Mr. Wallace Clark, director of the Paranet. Rundy New Carson, director of the Trumpets. This is Deneen White, director of the Piccolo. Mr. Donald Beckwith, the Christian manager. I'll come in. The Marching 100 of Florida A&M University. The Riverfront Classic. Everyone smiling at Paul Brown Stadium. More halftime activities after these messages. Dominance by Florida a &M. It is absolutely staggering when you look at 347 total offensive yards to 68. And if you look at that time of possession, Mark, that shows you the efficiency and the devastation the Florida A&M can exert. The time of possession disparity isn't as great as you would think when you look at the disparity in terms of total yards. It's been a situation where Florida A&M's offensive and defensive lines are controlling this game. You'll get Casey Printers. Casey Printers will be getting all the credit for running the passing attack. Rashad Pompey will get all the props, if you will, for running the football extremely well. But the bottom line is they've shut down Morgan, and their defensive line has had a lot to do with it. Well, Casey Prentice, as we mentioned, was injured just before the half. Let's check in with Lewis Breeden. Lewis? Well, Casey Prentice had an outstanding first half, but he won't have an outstanding second half because he's got an ankle injury. Had a uh, conversation in the locker room with Coach Billy Joe. Casey Prentice will not play here in the second half of this ballgame. Don't have an update on who will start in the second half, but Casey Prentice will not play the second half of this ballgame, guys. Thank you, Lewis. More than likely, that is going to be Reggie Hayes, the senior who came in when Prentice was injured, and he knows the system. And remember, it was Reggie Hayes who engineered the 17 points that they got in the University of Miami game. So the team has, com you know, a comfort level with him. He has the confidence to know that he can move the football, certainly if he can mo move the football against Miami's second unit. With all due respect to Morgan, he should be able to have some success against a bear defense that is really playing soft in the middle. And Billy Joe told us when we chatted with him that he is confident in number 18, Reggie Hayes, although he'd rather have printers out. Let's revisit some other thoughts. The keys to the game at the very beginning and see where we stand with that right now well when you look at the keys to the game we thought that Morgan's were, we talked about Casey Penner's progress he's passing it over 50 percent efficiency and he's also got just about under 200 yards and you got to give him credit for running the football as well he's made good decisions and they've come out and they played this flawless football game so I don't think Florida A&M has been overconfident at all when you look at the keys to winning for Morgan we thought they had to stop somebody. Giving up over 300 yards in total offense in the first half, haven't got it done. We also thought 
that they were going to need some breaks. And frankly, the only breaks they've gotten in the first half have been bad ones. It's been total domination by Florida A&M, and Morgan has to just look for something positive here in the second half. Well, for Morgan State, the fact that that man is going to be a quarterback as opposed to Casey Printers probably gives them a small glimmer of hope because they were unable to stop a Casey Printers-led attack. Now, Reggie Hayes comes in for an entire half. And I think Reggie Hayes, you know, the disadvantage that you have if you're Morgan and facing a second-string quarterback is the fact that this guy wants to get into the stat book, too. This guy wants to get some numbers, and Coach Donald Hill Ely is going to have to find a way to contain the overall offensive touch. You may lose Casey Printers, but Rashawn Pompey is still out there. Dennis Bonga is still out there. Marco Junius has not gotten off just yet, and neither have any of the other talented receivers that they have as well. So. Florida A&M is a balanced offensive attack, and it's a tall order for the Bears to uh, try to stop them with or without Casey Printers at the helm. As you look at Reggie Hayes, remember, folks, that he does know success with the... Both guys on this, uh, he leads the team in rushing going into this contest he did. 134 yards, three touchdowns. So this now is his opportunity. Casey Printers definitely will not play. So the Rattlers' fortunes for the second half will be squarely on the shoulders of their senior number 18. Levy Brown leading a defense that on the other end of the ball, Mark, Forget about the offense. Morgan State has to figure out a way to negotiate number 11 and his teammates. Well, their offensive line has to step up. I'm talking about uh, Morgan quarterbacks really not having any opportunity to sit back in the pocket and survey. Again, the second half of the Riverfront Classic here at Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. We're underway as Morgan State receives the kickoff. It's Dickens. <laughs> He breaks across to the 30-yard line. You know something? It was the ubiquitous Levy Brown once again. <laughs> and Brown is limping a bit as he walks off. Brown is the leader on that defensive unit. He does everything, as Mark mentioned earlier in the telecast. He receives punts, special teams, leads them in interceptions, has two on the afternoon already. He doesn't miss tackles. I mean, he's as, as sure a tackler as you'll find certainly in the MEAC, if not in all of one double-A. And uh, Gimpy just a little bit right now. And Little John is going to start for Morgan at the quarterback spot. So Bradshaw Little John, who came on for the last few plays of the first half after LeJominic Washington had myriad problems, comes in at quarterback, first and 10 at the 30-yard line. And Little John elects to keep it, gets the first down, moving the chain. I like that play call because it's safe. It puts the burden of making a play on Little John, who many have said in the Morgan camp plays football like he does in high school. You know, it is interesting that his surname is Little John. <laughs> and he is 6'3", 258 pounds. Anything but. <laughs> First and 10 at the 42-yard line from Morgan State. Donald Hill, Ely's team, really needs to get going, trailing 24-0 against a powerful Florida A&M team. Under pressure, Little John avoids it, gets outside, has another first down, still moving along the sidelines, knocked out of bounds finally by Levy Brown at the 25-yard line. Check that. It was Shedrick Copeland, so used to seeing Messer Brown make the tackle. Boy, I tell you. Bradshaw Little John got around the corner and went from quarterback to running back in a millisecond. He shows his strength, his speed, and his power on this 32-yard run. Blitz came right up the middle. They got pressure that time in the person of Channing Johnson, but he gets outside the containment, goes down the sideline, and if T.J. Stallings is able to make a block, he probably takes it to the house. Remember what Lewis Breeden pointed out in the first half. Morgan State's defense to get better needs the offense to have a sustained, successful drive. First and 10 from the 25. Little John stepping up in trouble and goes down. Well, once again, coming off the corner that time, Florida A&M is able to get some pressure. And I got to believe a center right now in the middle of the Morgan offensive front Yannick Boca isn't making the right calls, and so the pass protections aren't there. He's got to read blitz just like the quarterback. You know, now, now granted, Little John came into the season as the number two quarterback on the depth chart, but look at that. That's five sacks in the afternoon for Florida A&M. He doesn't know how to check off. He doesn't have any audibles in the package as of yet does Little John, so he can't change the play. That means your offensive line has to change protection when they recognize something. Second down, Little John to the air. 
<laughs> Sherman cannot hold on to it. That will bring up third and 14. And it's amazing how a play like that can just thwart your entire drive. You know, a missed assignment by James Roberson, which led to the sack. And Roberson, frankly, has been getting beaten, beaten up all game. Third and 14 for Morgan State. Little John, eight rushes for 70 yards so far. The rest of his teammates, 13 for 26, respectively. To the air, has a receiver. There is a flag down in the backfield. So hang on, we may bring it all back. Or we may add to it and give him a first down because there may be a roughing the passer. Yeah, that was a roughing the passer call against Florida A&M. Nice pickup, Coach Gray. Well, you can see the blitz coming in. If we get a chance to check it out on the replay, I'm interested in seeing if he took a, a good couple of steps down in there. Defense had the distance to the goal. First down. And you know, that's a discipline question where fam, you may have let up just a little bit. It's one, two. Oh, yeah, he speared him in the back. He's fortunate he didn't get tossed that time. Did uh, Leon Scott. And Scott knows better than that. This is a veteran ball player. Been through the wars. Been to a couple of uh, one double-A playoff games. Just can't do that. And I think maybe it was not so much as many steps as he took, as much as the fact he led with his head and speared him in the back. My mom always said, if you lead with your head, that's not a good thing. But then why does your mom also tell you to use your head? You go far. No, use it. Don't lead with it. Ah, use it. Okay. And First and ten. Loose ball on the ground. <laughs> And a mistake by Morgan State leads to Florida A&M's possession of the ball. Well, they switched quarterbacks on us, Dwayne. They brought LeJominic Washington in to handle the snaps. Now watch Washington. He, he's supposed to fake mass confusion in the offensive backfield that time. I'm not quite sure that having to make the transition from quarterback to running back in the middle of a drive is a healthy decision for the offense to have to make especially when you got people that are just learning and just coming back into the lineup. You might be able to do that in two or three games, but that was ill-advised at that time. So Reggie Hayes and Florida A&M take over at their own 19-yard line. Pompey, who's had a tremendous first half, 102 yards rushing in that first half, and now he's picking up where he left off. Well, the thing that the Florida A&M brain trust like about Pompey is that he's a disciplined runner. He makes he makes good decisions behind his blockers, and that's how he's able to pick up huge yardage. Pompey 118 yards, second and four at the 25-yard line. Hayes out of the shotgun. He decides to keep it. May get two yards. Let's check in. Lewis Breeden has an old Cincinnati Bengals teammate with him. Lewis. Now is number 13 in your heart and in your program. Kenny, the rat Riley. He played at Florida A&M as a quarterback. Came to Cincinnati, defensive back for 15 seasons, 65 interceptions. Am I right, Kenny? Got to get everything right here. One of the best defensive backs ever to play in the National Football League. He coached at Green Bay. Now he's back at Florida A&M. Came back as a head coach. Now he's the athletic director. Kenny's glad to have you here, man. Well, thank you, Lewis. Pleasure to be back here in this new stadium. I was just looking at the old field where you and I had I think. Pleasure to more than 200 Rutgers and Gamble. Everybody clapping and calling that year. We worked hard. It's all clear here. Four minutes of the morning at him. I mean, they put up 24 points. Hello! Rutgers and Gamble. We apologize. We are experiencing some audio difficulties. Lewis and Ken Riley are chatting down on the sidelines. Hopefully we'll clear them up and be able to bring them to you in a moment. Those two guys shared some cold times in this city playing in the NFL. Across the street at a building that will be reduced to uh, rubble. Actually, the parking lot sounds a lot better than rubble. I mean, if I were a building, I'd much rather be reduced to, you know, a parking lot than to just rubble. Ken Riley, Director of Athletics at Florida A&M University. He must be very pleased at the moment. His Rattlers on the move with a 24-0 lead in the third quarter. And this young man is really making a name for himself this afternoon, Richard Pompey. Well, he certainly is good as advanced billing right now. This time, they come with the little trap action once again, and they, they pull Kenneth Jones, get a trap block, 
Well, get trap blocks from Fletcher Williams and Shedrick Moten. And it leads to an eight yard pickup. Second and one. Hayes moving Pompey around in the backfield. 11 14 to go in the third quarter of this Riverfront Classic. Low snap, gets away from Hayes, picks it up, and he is swarmed by Morgan State Bears. Let's check in now again with Ken Riley and who is the guest of Lewis Breed. Lewis. Hey guys, once again I'm back with Kenny Riley who is the athletic director of Florida A&M doing a great job there and he's been there for a while. Former coach of Florida A&M and Kenny that was an outstanding first half. You have to be proud of the way uh, Florida A&M came out and played the first half of the ball game. Very pleased with the first half of the ball game. We got 24 points. I'm kind of concerned because my quarterback got a little nick. But uh, hopefully he'll be okay. But the second string quarterback has come in and done a very good job for us against Miami. He came in, we got 17 points, so he's very capable, but you want to have all your troops healthy and ready to go. Now, you being a former quarterback, what is it like when you're the leader of the football team and all of a sudden the leader of the, the quarterback goes down and you have to come on and play with another quarterback? Well, again, uh, this guy has been here for... Uh, Reggie has been with us for four years. Uh, he's a seasoned player. Uh, Casey Prentice is an excellent quarterback. And quite naturally, when your leader go down, you hope you have somebody can come in who can pick up the slack. And we, we think that Reggie Hayes can do the job. All right, guys. Kenny Riley, number 13, one of the few people who can wear the number 13 and play well, guys. Well, you know, <laughs> hey, I got a question for Ken Riley if, if Lewis Breeden still has him. Florida hey, thanks, man. Honey, you got okay. a Florida a and putting away. Damon Miller. Gets it off. DeShazzo goes nowhere. Shedrick Copeland and Levy Brown close him quite quickly. Ken Riley rejoins us when we come back. 24 0, his Rattlers lead. NBC Sports brings you a flash from the past every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. It's NBC Sports Classics. Tune in for the... Back for Florida a and who had that wonderful first half. Now out of pads. He is gone for the game. Injured ankle. What a first half for him. He helped lead Florida a and to their current 24-0 lead. Ken Riley, Director of Athletics for Florida a and down on the sidelines with our Lewis Breed. Now, Lewis, remember, America is watching. We want you to ask Ken to tell us some stories about you when you played with him. Hey, guys, uh, once again, I've got a lot of noise back there in the background. Could you give me the question one more time? Okay. Brad Littlejohn runs out of bounds for Morgan State. Ken. Lewis, we want Ken to tell us some stories about you, but we want you to be mindful America's watching. Oh, no, guys, you're going to put me on the spot here. Hey, Kenny Riley, do you have any good stories about uh, my greatness on the football field at cornerback? Do you, do, you have, do you remember anything? I know one great one. This was uh, the year we went to the Super Bowl, and we played San Diego, and Lewis returned the interception, I think, for 101 yards. We was in a, some type of a zone deep. That was, that's true, because that was one of the ones he did catch. He dropped a lot of them. He caught this one that particular day. Hey, guys. One thing about Ken Riley's memory is not too good. As you can tell, he's a lot older than I am. The interception return was 102 yards, guys. And Beyonce Shienko scores a touchdown. A big play for Morgan State. Finally, the Bears strike in a big way in the third quarter with 9.53 to go. They get on the board courtesy of Shante Shienko. Well, that's Bradshaw Lewis John showing his ability to get outside the pocket and be an accurate passer. And 73 yards later, watch. He's going to roll, and his tight end is going to roll to the same side of the field with him. It's going to create a one-on-one -on -one matchup in the center of the field. And that time, I think Levy Brown's just a day late and a dollar short. And Vashante Shanko takes it to the house. And suddenly, at 24-7, to here, not even midway through the third quarter, we have ourselves a bit of a game here. And Donald Hill, Ely elects to go for two points as opposed to the one. With LeJominique Washington in a quarterback on it. It's T.J. Stallings making his way into the end zone. Two more points for Morgan State. Tap that on to the 73-yard strike from Little John to Bishante Shienko. And all of a sudden, the Bears are beginning to stir. Morgan State is on the board. Plenty of time left in this one. Don't go anywhere. It's the Riverfront Classic. For that is a great touchdown pass from Bradshaw Littlejohn 
to Vashante Shanko, and it was just a beautiful play to watch. This is Little John right here. He's going to roll out here, and Shanko's going to come from this direction. It's going to create a one-on-one -on -one matchup. They're going to meet right here, and he's going to take it to the house. Let's let it go, guys. See, watch the half roll out of the shotgun in the face of the blitz. He gets past Kelly, and then he gets outside the pocket, and this is a strike online to Shanko, and once he gets past Levy Brown, nobody's going to touch him, and he's into the end zone for the score. And now, all of a sudden, Florida A&M is thinking it probably has some more work to do offensively. With Casey Printers out, the man that engineered those 24 points in the first half, and Morgan State apparently finding something that works offensively. Well, the transition between quarterbacks is, you know, the quarterback position is such a precarious situation. You know, you've got the hand exchanges, you've got the ability to handle the long snaps and things of that nature, and we just saw Bradshaw Littlejohn make a play, get outside the pocket and deliver an accurate strike, and that's the advantage having played two full games that he probably has over LeJohn Nick Washington. Garoshalin's kick will go out of bounds. That is the first touchdown in the third quarter for Morgan State this season. Amazing. You, you are just all over it. <laughs> well, it helps. <laughs> it helps when you have someone like Mike Steinberg here working statistics for us here in the booth. He just passes me this great information. And you deliver it so well. Oh, great one. So Morgan State's defensive unit now has pressure, has not pressure, but has a reason to really step up. No, the pressure is on him because you got some momentum. Old man Moe's back on your side. The defense has to step up and try to force another three and out or keep FAMU off the scoreboard or old man Moe swings back over to the team in white. First and 10 from the 35-yard line for Florida A&M, Reggie Hayes. Gives it to Pompey, who's had a 100-yard game already, and he is escorted back about five yards by the entire defensive unit almost. Well, we talked about imposing your will on the game at the point of attack, and in the first half, it was the dominance of the Rattler offensive line at the point of attack that led to their 24-point lead. Suddenly, after a touchdown, the Bears seeming to seemingly are playing uh, more inspired. Second and 11 from the 34-yard line. 9-13 to go here at Paul Brown Stadium. Florida A&M, another low snap to Reggie Hayes. Elects to run it along the sidelines. Turns back up field, nearly gets the first down. Let's check in with Lewis Breeden. Hey, hey guys, with me now is Isaac Curtis, former uh, Cincinnati Bengal wide receiver, four-time Pro Bowler. And Isaac, uh, you've been here for a long time now, ever since you left college. This is your home now. What brings you to an event like this is the Procter & Gamble uh, a Riverfront Classic? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, it's a great opportunity uh, for, you know, for myself and for the city. I mean, to, to be able to see two predominantly uh, black universities here in the Midwest that you don't get a chance to see. And, uh, you know, to have, to have them here, and of course, Ken Riley, uh, being an old teammate of mine as well, you know, so it's a great opportunity to come out here. But mainly to, to see the colleges and universities and support the, the uh, event. Okay, I'm going to test Isaac's uh, football knowledge just a little bit here. Morgan State is down on this ball game. They just scored a touchdown. The score now is 24 to 8. When you're down that far, how do you get back into the ball game? You got to put it up in the air. <laughs> you got to put it up in the air. You got to get it in the chunks. What? That, that's true. That's spoken from a wide receiver who loves an area show. Absolutely. Okay, guys. Number 85, Isaac Curtis, is one of the best of all time in the National Football League. He okay. certainly is. Yes, indeed. And like Lewis, I'm not shocked that he said you have to put it in the air <laughs> but you know something speaking of lewis the former defensive back when you want to come back you've also when you've got a chance to make a big play on defense like daryl pollen just did you got to haul in the interception i mean there have been several interceptions this afternoon that have been the, in the hands of bare defensive backs and they haven't been able to make the big play well speaking of plays they are not being made currently by florida a m another mistake holding is actually called on shedrick moton number 72 at left tackle and that moves it back first and 10 first and 21 now from the 35 yard line it is so difficult for a quarterback to get into rhythm having not taken most of the snaps in practice and right now reggie hayes just a little cold and his offense offensive line just a little out of sync he's under pressure and under throws charles allen as all 
all of a sudden, there is life in the Morgan State defensive unit. Andre Williams bearing down on Reggie Hayes. But you know something? Florida A&M is getting a lot of pressure right now. And remember, they lost Gadea Morris in the first half. And there's pressure from the right side. And that's normally the area where he patrols. Second and 21 from the 35-yard line. 24-8, Florida A&M leads. Hayes looking for Pompey, who could not hold on to it. Edward Kwaku was there escorting him. Yeah, but it was a... Uh, Darinko Lewis. Yeah, but the pressure came straight up the middle that time from the Bears. Big number 50, Jason Whaley. The defensive end on the stunt curls to the inside and is able to get pressure right up the middle, and that really disrupted the uh, the flow of that play. This is a big uh, third down situation for Florida A&M right here. That was the seventh drop pass for Florida A&M in this game. It seems as though a number of them have come since Reggie Hayes has been in the game. They certainly have, but Corners only had two or three that were dropped. There have been a lot of drops here with Hayes in the lineup. Third and long. Hayes under pressure again, gets it off, has a man open, has it! Junius, Marco Junius, big play for Florida A&M. That's a dagger right into the heart of the Bears. It's a post pattern, and remember, we told you earlier how they were setting it up with the slants. This time, instead of going slant, they go over the top, down the field, and Junius is out there. He gets a step that time on the Bears' Roger Logan, and... He almost takes it into the end zone. Momentum swings right back to Florida a and side after a play like that. Huge play. First and 10 now at the 13-yard line. Florida A&M looking for his first points of the second half. 52-yard pickup on the Junius reception. Hayes, time to throw. Decides to run, has an open field. Six points, Florida A&M. And folks, that's how you get momentum right back on your side. Two plays to go, Dwayne. Two plays. It was third and 21. Two plays later, Morgan now trails 30 days. Boy, can it turn. And that's the benefit that Billy Joe has in having a seasoned, experienced young man who can step in in a situation like this when Printers goes down with an injury. When your secondary breaks down like Morgan's did, they make a big play. Hayes comes along, capitalizes on it. Vasquez in for the extra point. <laughs> Mr. Automatic makes it 31-8. Florida A&M answers the Morgan State score. Reggie Hayes, not by air, this time by land. Gets back on top, 31-8, to eight, and this is how. Watch the shield blocking right here by the, the Rattlers line, and that's going to create a seal right up in here, and the quarterback, Reggie Hayes, is going to take it to the house through the lane that's created. Watch, he gets great offensive line protection up front. You know, this is Pompey. He's going to clear out the, the linebacker, and that just creates the lane. Reggie Hayes scoots into the corner of the end zone for the score. You know, Coach Gray, that line and that hole was so impressive, I think you could have scored on that play. I think I might have. <laughs> because the fear factor would have, I would have been running for my dear life. Seven plays, 65 yards, two, 27, that Hayes 13-yard run. The key play being the Marco Junius 52-yard reception on third and 21. Juan Vasquez with the kickoff. Kevin Dickens and William DeShazzo are back. It's DeShazzo. This guy has speed if he can get it going. And he is knocked down quickly before he can get a full head of steam going. Chris Ramsey. Well, Morgan already has as many uh, numbers in terms of yardage in the first half. There was a flag on the field. We await word from the officials. Well, that's progress. If you have it 74 is. yards at this juncture, well, and that's all you had in the entire second half, first when half. When you're down 24 nothing at the half, you're just looking to make some positive things happen coming out after the break. Hopefully, and they had done it, except for a couple of breakdowns defensively. I mean, Morgan's right back in this game. Two, after this the game was over, personal foul on a kicking team, 15-yard penalty, first down. 
Personal foul on the kicking team. Thirty-one eight. Marco Williams is being talked to by the trainers. I guess we're ready to take a look at Morgan State's last drive. And again, you know, it was Bradshaw Littlejohn giving this team a shot in the arm. See, this is getting outside of the pocket. He avoids the pressure. And this is a strike. Online, moving away, finding his big all-conference caliber tight end, Shanko. And then the two-point conversion. Give the ball to T.J. Stallings. Hole in the middle is not there. He dances to the outside, has the speed to get it into the end zone. And at that point, it seemed like the momentum was swinging, but a breakdown on defense cost them dearly. Reggie Hayes came in, settled down, and got the team moving. That nice strike, 52 yards to the man to his right, Marco Junius, was the play. And it's interesting. It seemed that Printers had bonded with Bonga, and that was his primary target. Now you see, apparently, Reggie Hayes has bonded with Marco Junius. LaJominic Washington is back in at quarterback for Morgan State. Donald Hill Ely has been platooning. Washington, who had an arthroscopic surgery he returned from this week, and Bradshaw Littlejohn, who directed the scoring drive. I guess this is a situation where you got to start shaking the rust off of your number one quarterback. First and 10 for the 37. Batted down and away by Amar Gubarel. And you know, that's the dilemma that he's been facing all afternoon. When the pressure gets back there, you know, he's either sacked or they've got some hands up. Look at the pressure. It's a, a pretty decent snap that time. But look, this is this is not basketball season, but that's a rejection. <laughs> that pass was rejected by Gabrielle. Gabrielle, 6'4", 257 pound junior from L.A. Extend that hand, and that's quite an arc you have to get over to get the ball out. Second and 10 for the 37. This time, Washington runs, has the first down up the middle near the 40-yard line. Well, that has been the most effective rushing attack the Bears have had all afternoon. The standpoint of moving the football on the ground, it's been all on the quarterback. The quarterback draw, nothing fancy. Direct snap to the quarterback. They open up a great hole. That time, they got good blocking in the middle from Aaron Wiggins and Joe Wright, and it opened up the hole for Washington just to scoot on up in there and score the touchdown. That sets up first and 10 at the 43-yard line. Washington, a very deep set in the shotgun. Time to throw, and it goes away. Jeff Green, who has been near him most of the afternoon, finds him, tracks him down, and bags him. Well, at this point, I'm, I'm certifiably baffled. Watch the pocket collapse here. Now, the reason that Washington is in the lineup is because the coaching staff says he does a better job sitting in the pocket. When the pocket is collapsing on you, you got to have somebody to make a play outside the pocket. Wesley Charles, number 76, the right offensive tackle, was just... Green just beat him. Well, he's been struggling all afternoon, and that's a large reason for the fact that FAMU has six sacks against Morgan. So now it's second and 17. Little John now in the game at quarterback, and he barrels his way to a first down on the ground. And Donald Hill Ely continues to shuttle the quarterbacks in and out. Well, coach wants to keep everybody on their P's and Q's as far as intensity and level of focus and preparation. And, you know, you admire that, but it just appears this afternoon that Little John clearly has given Morgan a better chance to compete. And LaJominic Washington is back in at quarterback for this play. Maybe, maybe he's simply trying to keep Florida A&M's defense off balance. Well, Morgan's colors are orange and blue, which are the same colors at the University of Florida, and maybe he's taking a page out of Steve Spurrier's old book. <laughs> this quarterback ain't getting it done. He got to come out. What were you seeing, Danny? What were you seeing? <laughs> that's, that's your Steve Spurrier. <laughs> the officials have stopped play for a moment, but for Hill Ely now, Bradshaw Littlejohn has been very productive when he's been in at quarterback, number seven. Uh, to me, uh, he, he's been the, the defining offensive weapon of this contest for the Bears. With all due respect to Lejomnik, 
it just appears that three games, three weeks into the season, there's a lot less rust on Little John. And I know Coach Hill wants to expand his offensive package, but. First and 10, Little John to the air, has a receiver, and has a first down, does Kevin Dickens. And Shedrick Copeland was there to stop him. Jim Morgan picking up the pace a little bit in their own right, going to a bit of the no huddle. Morgan State trailing 31-8, 5-11 to go in the Riverfront Classic here in Cincinnati, Ohio. But in seasons past, a Bear team in a situation like this would have quit. And this team has shown no quit in themselves this afternoon. That's all part of Donald Hill Ely's influence, instilling a sense of purpose and accomplishment in his Bears. First and 10 from the 21. Washington elects to keep it, picks up a couple before he's quickly grabbed and stopped by Chris Gilchrist. Well, sooner or later, the defense is going to make the adjustment to the quarterback draw. I mean, the quarterback sits back there and he's got an empty backfield. You know, if it breaks down, the only only place to go is up the middle. And Florida a and with wholesale substitutions in the defensive lineup right now. I mean, they've got Levy Brown out of there who got a little dinged up, I think, on the opening kickoff of the second half. Check that. He's back in the lineup. That's Brown right here. Dominic nearly had six more. Now, how many drops is that on the afternoon for Morgan? Tremaine Norris couldn't hold on in the end zone. It's a perfect strike. Goes right over top of the linebacker who must have got a hand up in his face. Well, Marco Williams actually did an impressive job defensively. That right hand appeared to get up there and just grazed the ball. But still, if it touches your hand, you've got to haul it in. Coach Gray, very tough on his players. Hey, big players have to make big plays. Coach Hill Ely's Morgan State Bears. Opportunity to get six more. We'll see what happens. Stay with us. 31-8, Bradshaw, Little John. What an impact he's had. Don't forget, you're watching NBC and it's back-to-back -back laughter Wednesday and Thursday nights on NBC Network. Rock, Eleanor, Pop, and Joy will have you in stitches Wednesdays at 8 and 8.30. Then, funny man Corey Zoo Miller finds humor in Hollywood. Check out Real Reviews, a hilarious look at the latest movie flicks, Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. on NBC Network. When is the Mark Gray show coming? I don't know. I, I, I know one thing. I'm, I'm big on this rock thing because I like Eleanor a lot. That's hope for all of us single guys that know that, hey, <laughs> rock, a trash man can have a woman as fine as her. There's hope for us yet. Okay, Mark, let's reel it in. <laughs> Donald Hill Ely's Morgan State Bears trail 31-8 with 4-11 to go in the third quarter. Opportunity to get six more, and the snap gets away from LeJominic Washington. Flag on the play. Be a late Overzealous. Hit. Florida A&M Rattlers because the play was over. I think Leon Scott once again is going to be flagged for, check that, J James Colson, number 56. He's going to be called for being overzealous after the play was dead. That could turn out to be huge for Morgan State. After the play was over, personal foul, illegal helmet contact, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Wow. How was that for a turn of events? Well, it just keeps the bear hopes on life support. See, watch right here. Number 57 just, well, that's that's a tough call. I mean, it, it, when, when you're as big as he is, it's kind of hard to, uh, you know how it is when the car's moving downhill and the brakes aren't working? <laughs> no, and I hope never to experience that empirically. First and 10 at the 19. Washington out of the shotgun looking for more. Stalling nearly gets it. Nice pass, though, by LeJomini Washington. He put it right where it needed to be past Ricky Funch's hands and right there where Stallings could have made the catch. And, you know, early in, in, in the first half, we saw Dennis Bonga with a receiver in his face, excuse me, a defensive back in his face in the corner of the end zone. He makes a catch like that. T.J. Stallings doesn't. Those two plays are a microcosm of this game. I mean, Stallings a great player, has great hands. You know, he... Dominic Washington is 2 of 13, but I guarantee you, 7 or 8 of his passes that have been right on the dime have been dropped. Once again, deep set in the shotgun as Washington from the 19-yard line. 
This time he elects to run. He's been successful doing this. It's coming back. He leaps into the end zone, but there is a flag at the 20-yard line. It's coming back, and watch. You're going to have a holding call, and that will be a holding call probably on the center, Yannick Boker. Watch. There it is. Big number 71 was holding Joe Sanders. Offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat second down. That Let's take a look at it right here. This is Sanders getting pressure on the quarterback, and I believe you're going to see number 71 come over there and pick up Sanders, which is going to create the lane. See, right here at that point, it just mars a brilliant athletic play by Washington. That's highlight reel stuff. That is very impressive. What would you give him? Oh, that's a 10. <laughs> we have no French judge here, right? Exactly. Okay. Nobody's paid off. <laughs> <laughs> Second and 20 from the 29 now. Penalties costing both teams opportunities. 344 to go in the third quarter. Washington again in the shotgun. He's operated from there most of the afternoon. Looking downfield, short pass is not completed. Marco Williams there defensively. But again, the pocket breaks down. Washington's absolutely got no help from his teammates, be it drop passes, be it breakdowns in the offensive line. Coach Donald Hill Illy has to go back to the drawing board because his offensive front and his, some of his skill players haven't really stepped up to bail his quarterback out today. Well, Dominic Washington is in, but Brad Littlejohn came in. Bradshaw Littlejohn, and when he came in, he made an impact. It is amazing that he's sitting back on the bench right now. You know, before Littlejohn entered the game, the Bears had only 26 yards in total offense. And since then? 205. The impact of Bradshaw Littlejohn. This is the... 17th play of the drive, 11th play of the drive for Morgan State. Washington out of the shotgun under pressure, gets it off. Third interception of the game for Levy Brown, who now has five on the season. Well, that's just a pass where he tried to force it in there to his tight end. Gave the pump fake on the out route. Tries to look for an open man down the center of the field. He just forced this play. And that's what coach is asking him right now. What are you looking at? Watch. Decent snap. Now watch the pump fake right here. Bought him a little bit of time, but again, no containment. You know, Sanders comes unabated up the middle and forces the dying quail into the air that's hauled in by Levy Brown. He's seen Joe Sanders and Sean Green, Jeff Green, so often in the backfield has John McWashington. He probably thinks they're teammates of his. Well, he's going to probably see him in his sleep tonight. So Reggie Hayes and Florida AM take over at the 20 yard line. And Hayes elects to keep the ball. Runs into a wall of Morgan State Bears. Let's take another look at the interception right here. Washington, watch. Coming up the middle right here, you're going to see the pressure of Sanders forces him to release a pass early, and it's just not a whole lot of touch on it. And Levy Brown, that's an easy gift. That's three interceptions on the afternoon. Second and six from the 24. On that previous play, Hayes got up with a grimace on his face. Time to throw. Short pass in the direction of Marco Junius. <laughs> Where Casey Prentice looked seemingly almost every pass route for Dennis Bronga, it seems like Paco is the hot receiver with Hayes up under center. Hayes, one of five, 52 yards, and that 152-yarder, two Junius. But how big was that play, though? It was on third and 21. And now we have third and six for Florida A&M. This would be a can 24-yard line. Hayes out of the gun. Has to run. Let's it go. It is nearly intercepted. Unbelievable. Derek Gross had it in his hands. No one around him. Maybe he couldn't believe his fortune. 
Morgan is going to petition the MEAC to allow them to use stick them <laughs> after today's game. I mean, how many drops is that? Watch. This is a gift. But he, Mark, he's a defensive back now. He ran a better pass route <laughs> than the receiver does. He's not actually an intended receiver, so. Still, <laughs> that doesn't mean he can't use the stick them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is amazing to watch how many wide open chances the Bears have had to make plays this afternoon, and they simply haven't been able to do it, DB, because they can't take advantage of the breaks. Damon Miller on to punt. Gets off a high kick to Shazzo, feels it at the 33 yard line, cuts back upfield, has some room to go. He has speed. about the 34-yard line you know of Florida A&M, but there's a flag on the near sideline. There may be an illegal block, but he simply dropped the football. <laughs> Watch this. This is great. <laughs> when it rains, it pours. And this is just one of those films they're going to look at. And uh, he, he had to have dropped the football or had it stripped out of there, and it goes right into his teammates' hands. Wow. What a bizarre play. There's no foul on the play. The player was hit and fumbled Roger Logan, Johnny on the spot for Morgan State when DeShazzo loses it. Watch right here. Good seal block into the center. It's going to give him a lane up the field. Now watch. Here comes a big hit. He's ripped out. His teammate picks it up and continues to roll down the field. <laughs> wow. That's, that's amazing stuff right there. How do you diagram that play? I don't know. I guess somebody in uh, Nashville probably figured it out. First and 10 from the 33. Now Little John, the quarterback from Morgan State. He barrels his way up for about six yards before he's met and hard by Levy Brown and Tanner. Well, I tell you what, you've often heard about quarterbacks playing with a linebacker's mentality. <laughs> well, here, here's a converted linebacker that's just embracing the contact. And he just got his bell rung. So Little John will go out after that nice run. In will come LeJominic Washington, who just threw the interception on their previous series. Second and one, pickup of nine for Little John on that previous play. Sherman has it. Touchdown, Morgan State. Well, BT Sherman finally has been able to hold on to the ball and make a play. We had a couple opportunities in the first half to do the same thing when it was a when the game seemingly was in doubt, but finally the Bear fans have something to cheer about. You know what was interesting on that play? We saw the feast of famine predicament of defensive backs, especially cornerbacks. Levy Brown went for the interception. He he could smell it. I'm, well, when you've got three, <laughs> you figure anything that's in your direction <laughs> by right, you should have an opportunity to get. Wasn't the case in that situation. Donald Hill Ely elected once again, as he did on the previous touchdown, to go for two points. Chianco in motion. Washington to Stallings. He scored on the last two-point conversion. He's in trouble. Oh, Gets a block, a big block from the quarterback, and makes it into the end zone. LeGermanic Washington is the leader of this team, and now you see why he's in the lineup. That was just simply an outstanding block. Who says quarterbacks aren't athletes? Who says they aren't tough? Washington sprung his running back with a great block. Now watch the touchdown here. Quick out pattern, and Levy Brown makes a break on the ball. He's not able to get it. Sherman then is able to make a couple of nice moves. Now watch this move. In, str in trouble is Stallings. He's going to reverse his field and his quarterback with a great block to give him an opportunity to get up the third gear so he can find the corner of the end zone. Watch for yard TD reception for Sherman. And we are a holding penalty away. Remember, LeJomnick Washington scored on that hurdling touchdown, and it was brought back on the count of holding, and then the Bears turned over the football. If that score holds, I mean, we're looking at what, 23 right now? We would like for Mr. and Mrs. Brown to know that we realize Levy was not the young man beaten on that last touchdown. It was actually Edward Kwaku. We've been so used to Levy being involved in every play. Well, he uh, <laughs> Kwaku got beaten, but Levy Brown had a chance to get him at the corner. 
as well. You're not going to let him off the hook, are you? Oh, he's the great. He's one of the best <laughs> in the conference. He wouldn't have it any other way. Baroshalin, the kickoff. And the return up the sidelines by E.J. Collier to about the 22-yard line. Collier, one of those lineage players on the Florida a and roster. Interesting you should mention that. Yes, he is. This is awful close to being a late hit. E.J. Collier, his father, and grandfather both played at Florida A&M. Grandfather was a quarterback, All-America quarterback. Pompey trying to get something on the ground, and all of a sudden, Albert Gamble and the Morgan State Bears appear as though they have life and purpose on defense. And we thought that Gamble was banged up in the first half. We mentioned E.J. Collier a moment ago. He's E.J. Collier the fourth, but he's not the only Rattler who was generational. Alexander, Kelly, Pompey, they all had fathers that played for Florida A&M. In the case of Collier, his father and grandfather. Yeah, and Alexander le Alexander's father led Florida A&M with 141 career receptions until Terry Mickens, who went on to play for the Green Bay Packers, broke his mark. And of course, Neil Colsey Jr. is the son of Neil Colsey Sr., who was a longtime solid defensive hey, back and great special team performer for the Miami Dolphins. Morgan State's defensive unit stepping up. Jason Whaley stopping Pompey on that last drive. It's third and nine at the 22 yard line. Time winding down in the third quarter. Reggie Hayes steps out of the pocket, looking to the sideline to run and gets out of bounds just before Clifford Johnson can get a good shot at him. Wow, we've got ourselves an interesting fourth quarter setting up here. 31-16, Morgan State, friends, let's recap. It was 24-0 at the half. Florida A&M in complete control. Casey Printers with nearly 200 yards passing in the first half. He gets hurt late in the first half. Donald Hill Ely comes out with his Morgan State Bears and have managed to get back into this one relatively speaking 31 16 12 seconds to go in the third quarter well they came ever so close with roger logan coming off of the uh right end on the last punt attempt and the bears certainly look like they're coming again this holding that whoa that ball was tipped subsequent bounce to shazzo determined to run Maybe not a smart decision. First man to get to him was Levon Gorham. So after three, Florida A&M still leading 31-16, but Morgan State showing signs of life. State 31-16, a very big. And now Little John back in the lineup. Donald Hill Lilly continues to shuttle his quarterbacks. Flag. Knocked down on the play. Nice run by Little John. Ball is loose, but it was dead on the play. Little John doing what he does well, making things happen. This is an interesting bit of strategy that is continuing to work for the, was the Bears. Down. There is no fumble. Now Bradshaw, Little John goes out, and in comes LeJominic Washington. Well, I kind of, I'm beginning to understand the philosophy of Coach Hill. If Florida A&M is going to sit back and play soft, it's going to allow your quarterback running lanes. And he's letting his talented, athletic quarterbacks take advantage of that. Fam, you dropping seven guys into coverage, Morgan is able to run the football with the quarterback. That 14-yard run sets up first down. Washington, Chianco, who has another first down. It's amazing, really, that we have not called his name more this afternoon. They really haven't been looking in his direction. They've been trying to use him in pass protection, and this time he gets off the line of scrimmage, finds a little soft area once again where there's one-on-one -on -one coverage, shows his athleticism, goes up and catches it, breaks one tackle and almost breaks another, and the Bears are in Florida A&M territory once again. LeJominic Washington has them on the move. Opening moments of the fourth quarter in the Riverfront Classic in Cincinnati, Ohio. Out of the shotgun, 
High snap, but he manages to hold it, decides to run, has a first down and more. Marco Williams tracks him down, but not before another big piece of real estate is covered by Morgan State. Suddenly, the Bears look like the team that can't be stopped. Well, it, it, watch this once again. It's a high snap, and watch that hole open up right there that gives him a lane, and he just does everything else all on his own. You know, it's hard to believe that a couple of weeks ago, this guy was uh, had an uh, orthoscopic surgery for uh, a meniscus situation. The inverted numbers, reverse numbers now between the first and second half for total yardage by the respective teams. Another first down for Morgan State. Now at the 25-yard line of Florida A&M. Time running down on the play clock. Did get it away. Now it's Bradshaw, Little John in at quarterback. Friends, you have to keep the scorecards close by. You certainly do. <laughs> because Donald Hill Ely is shuttling his quarterbacks in and out. Yeah, it's almost like Florida did back in the days under Coach Spurrier. This is like hockey in a line shift. <laughs> <laughs> or basketball where you got situation substitution. <laughs> So which one's the shooter, Bradshaw, Little I John, <laughs> or Dominic Washington? Well, I, I'd have to say that uh, Little John is the scorer and uh, Washington is the shooter at this point. Second and 10 at the 25-yard line for Morgan State High. Snap, Little John finally gets it, gets away from one defender, but is eventually dropped for a loss. It's Washington, Dominic Washington. That was just a bad snap from center. I mean, that's the dilemma of the blind snap. Well, you know, it's interesting watching Donald Hill Ely. For a moment, I thought he was going to try and send in Jorge Pena, a quarterback who's a third quarterback. Now, see, the quarterback is not ready for the snap. He's trying to make an adjustment at the line of scrimmage, and I guess it was a solid snap count. Now, is that a byproduct of shuttling quarterbacks and not getting a rhythm? Yep, exactly. Washington stays in for this play. Third and 18 from the 33. Here comes Green. He gets him, but he gets it off and overthrows Dickens. The closest man to it was actually Levy Brown of Florida A&M. Well, the pressure this time comes from Jeffrey Green coming from his defensive end position, and he's unabated. And he gets around the corner, and he forces the Dominic Washington to have to release the ball early. He had to let that be. If he's able to hold the rock about... A count later, he's able to put some touch on it, let his receiver go after it and get it. Watch the pressure coming from this side right here, and it's going to force him to release the ball early. And his receiver that time, who was Kevin Dickens, can't haul it in. There was a flag on the play, infraction against Florida A&M. What are they saying, a late hit or something? A holding call. Well, there was some contact in the defensive secondary, DB. I thought it was incidental, but apparently the guys who count thought a little more. For those of you keeping score at home, Bradshaw Littlejohn is now in at quarterback for Morgan State. First and 10 at the 23-yard line. Trailing 31-16 are the Bears. Mishandled snap. Littlejohn apparently got it back <laughs> and was able to move forward with considerable force. You know something? I just think it's a quarterback dive. Yeah. It's just a straight quarterback dot. Well, no, he does have problems with the snap that time. And nobody's able to bring him down. I mean, look, remember the kid is 250-some-odd pounds. Uh, that's a Mack truck. That's a Brahma Bull. And once again, the surname is Little John. 6'3", 258 pounds, 115 yards rushing. And FAMU has to call a timeout. Morgan State's Bears have Mr. Moe on their side. Back in a moment. Morgan State 31-16, 11-32 to go. Mark Gray, Lewis Breed, and Dwayne Ballin here. Black College Saturday on NBC, the Riverfront Classic. Lots of folks attending, enjoying. And Morgan State, which drive started on its own 30-yard line, now has the seventh play of the drive. T.J. Stallings up the middle, spinning over the 10-yard line. And the Bears, who seem to be out of this, frankly, at the half, 24-0, certainly are beginning to roar. This, oh, good job out of you, DB. <laughs> but I think the great adjustment that Coach Hill has done is he's gone shotgun. He's spreading the defense out. It's creating run lanes for his quarterbacks, and they've been able to take advantage of those situations. 
Well, Dominic Washington, the quarterback of the moment. Coach Hill Ely shuttling he and Bradshaw Little John. Chianco in motion. It's Stallings over the right side, but this time he's quickly grabbed and brought down. Levy Brown around the ball once again. Certainly, in crunch time. And what Coach Moore has done is he's shoring up the middle right now. He's taking away the cutback lanes, and he's taking away the, the potential for the draw. Now the question becomes, what can Coach Hill do to get the ball into the end zone? That's why I think you got to look for Shanko in a situation like this. Bradshaw Littlejohn, now the quarterback of record for Morgan State. Second and goal at the nine-yard line out of the shotgun. He's running, and he's brought down. But Morgan State recovers and moves forward. Well, Tremaine big... Norris, the backup tight end, Johnny on the spot for the Bears. Well, high snap once again. This is another quarterback draw, but I think Clifton Moore, the defensive coordinator of Florida A&M, called the timeout to sure up the middle, to take away the cutback lanes, and to force the Bears to put the ball in the air in this situation as opposed to just giving up big yardage on the ground. Huge play right here with a goal-to-go -go situation on the eight-yard line. Third down. LaJominic Washington now the quarterback. Great play. Edward Kwaku, who was burned on a touchdown earlier in the third quarter, comes up with the defensive stop. And it's great that Kwaku wearing that number 21, which was made so famous in the city of Tallahassee by one Deion Sanders. But, you know, to open the season, he had to wear uh, Sequan Dow's number against Miami because the FAMU jerseys, the new jerseys, hadn't arrived yet. Nice white jerseys, white clad Rattlers. Fourth and goal at the eight, trailing 31-16. This is big for Morgan State. Washington under pressure and he goes down. He held the ball too long. Yeah. Chris Gilchrist gets to him from the safety blitz. Well, see, this is where your offense breaks down when you're not able to score inside the red zone area. We're talking greater detail about it when we come back. Legomenic Washington, Donald Hill, they still trail 31 16. On being tended to, let's check in with Lewis Breeden. As joining me now is Al Collins Burke. Okay, talk with us a little about a little bit about uh, how you came to be and why you were involved with the Procter & Gamble uh, Riverfront Classic. Well, we were first approached by John Pace and his staff uh, asking us to get involved. And because the Classic focuses on education, it focuses on youth development, it focuses on building our communities, those things match with Procter & Gamble's objectives of improving the lives of uh, world consumers. And we do that through superior brands and products. We also do that through helping build up communities in which we live and work. Okay, one last thing here. We just talked about it a little bit. This classic is just not the fo football game. It, 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 is, it is a huge event, and people come here for all kinds of reasons. Oh, you just have to walk around the stadium, and you, you'll see people outside the stadium in the couriers. This is a big family reunion, and that's what black college football is really all about. It's about a game, but it's about family. It's about coming together and having a good time in a very good environment. All right, thanks, Al. Thanks for joining Thank us. You. Back to you guys. Thank you, Lewis. First and 10 for Florida A&M from the 27-yard line. Rattlers with Reggie Hayes at the controls. He keeps it, picks up maybe three before he's met by the Bears. And now they're taking the page out of the Bears' offensive playbook by going shotgun and putting the quarterback about seven or eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. As the Bears drop defenders, it's creating run lanes. And Hayes is taking advantage of it. He doesn't want to put the ball up here. They just want to chew up a couple of minutes. Second down from the 34. Hayes again elects to keep it on the ground. Has the first down. Loses the ball. But it is retained by Florida A&M. Miller comes up with it. I think there's been one turnover this afternoon by Florida A&M, but Morgan has had the opportunities to collect three or four of them easily. And here's another one. That bouncing ball going right between the legs, I believe, of Albert Gamble. 
and Florida A&M retains possession. We talked that Morgan needed some breaks. They haven't been able to get any. And it moved forward. The ball bounced forward, too, moving it to the 45-yard line of Florida A&M. Rattlers with a first and 10. Pompey over the right side. He had a big first half and is met quickly, very quickly, and with a bit of emphasis yeah. by Derek Gross. Threw that shoulder into his chest right here coming up at the end of the play. Watch this hit coming up. 31 is going to fill that hole, and here comes the shoulder. Boom! Hard-earned five yards for Pompey. Gross. 6'2", 200-pound sophomore from Louisiana. Second and five at the 50-yard line for Florida A&M. Hayes with a quick pitch to Pompey for the first down. Hayes made that pitch, Mark, with Sekou Goings draped around him. He sure did. That was an outstanding pitch and an even better catch by Pompey that time. Pompey just disciplined in this lane holding himself in a position where he could get the ball from his quarterback and Pompey having a huge day. Freshman from Tallahassee, his best game to date in a Florida A&M uniform, grew up five blocks away from the campus. First and 10 now from the 41 yard line of Morgan State. Florida A&M leading at 31-16. This time it's Hayes. Picks up a couple before he gets out of bounds. Early on, Casey Printers, the talented transfer from Texas Christian, led Florida A&M to a 24-0 halftime lead. Passing with efficiency nearly 200 yards. He was injured late in the first half. Hayes comes on. Hayes is a four-year player, a senior that's been around the system, a bit shaky in his first series or so, but he's settled down, and Florida A&M looks comfortable with Hayes at the controls now. You see Printers, that injured ankle. And he, boy, is he talented. Yeah, he, sure, he certainly is. Well, it's going to be interesting to watch his learning curve and his familiarity increase as the season moves along. Florida A&M moving the ball, moving the chains. Another first down for the Rattlers. And, you know, there's a talented former Morgan State University running back on Florida a and sideline right now. His name is Jimmy Joe, and he is the ninth-ranked all-time leading rusher in the history of Morgan. And he's got to be proud of his FAMU understudy and Rashad Pompey having a huge game. Joe, the offensive coordinator, as we see Pompey running and see where the injury occurred. It's hard to see there with all those blue and orange jerseys, but. Boy, man, hopefully it's not an appendage or anything. Maybe he just got the wind knocked out of him. And this young man has had a huge game. Just been so tremendous. He, he really has. Because when they were trying to adjust to Hayes coming in, Pompey on the ground made the transition much easier. Well, when the offense needed a kickstart in the first half, it was his play off the option that really got him going. I think he went for 53 yards. Pompey is up. That's a good sign. Let's revisit our trivia question from earlier in the telecast. 66 players from HBCUs on opening day on NFL rosters. Which NFL team had the most? Mark, what do you think? Hmm, I think it was the Cle was Cleveland one of them. Cleveland Browns was one of them. And I believe the Baltimore Ravens. Yes. You're right. Yes, thank you. This ding, is ding, the ding, no ding, prize ding. contest. Oh, wow. Nothing from the <laughs> Roy Hill collection? Or? First and 10. And now Florida A&M. Continue to keep it on the brown. Devin Richardson on the carry. About the only thing that went bad in that particular play was the fact that he got out of bounds. And it stops the clock. If you're a Rattler fan. Six minutes and one second left in the fourth Riverfront Classic from beautiful Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. Well, Devin Richardson had an idea, but Terrell Lockhart was not compliant. Well, I don't think he was fooled at the point of attack, and he filled the hole, if that's what you're trying to get at. <laughs> Loss on the play. Third and nine now from the 28-yard line. 
Well, I tell you, there's nothing greater to listen in on during the course of a week than a Billy Joe press conference. <laughs> He's the only coach in America I know that can get jocularities, Kaji, and Plethora <laughs> in at the same time. Meanwhile, his quarterback, Reggie Hayes, looking for real estate, finding it to move on. Not quite enough for a first down. But remember, they have Juan Vasquez, who may very well be the best field goal kicker in the conference, preseason all-conference kicker, and he's going to come on. Hayes, 11 carries, 72 yards on the ground so far. And we're looking at a 41-yard kick here. 41-yard attempt for Juan Vasquez. Charles Allen signaling timeout. Maybe Billy Joe wants to talk about this. No, he wants to get one more player on the field to protect his kicker. <laughs> Florida A&M, Vasquez, 41 yards away from three more. Stay with us. Fifteen all-conference kicker is set to attempt a 41-yard field goal to make it 34-16 Florida A&M. Junior from Miami, Florida. Very accurate, very reliable kicker. High snap. But it is handled. And three more for Florida A&M. So Donald Hill Ely concedes three more points to Florida A&M. It's 34-16. A&M leading 34-16. Time to look at our Verizon long distance play of the game. And it comes from the third quarter when Bradshaw Littlejohn, who they call the big show, gets outside the pocket, asks his tight end, can you hear me now? And he finds him, and he takes it into the end zone for the score for your Horizon Wireless on this play of the game. 73-yard play that ignited Morgan State, got the Bears back into the game. The previous drive, 12 plays, 62 yards. Over 454, 55 yards rushing on that drive for Florida A&M. Donald Hill, Ely's Morgan State Bears have been using two quarterbacks. Well, <laughs> you know, there's a tremendous disparity in offensive productivity between Little John and Washington. And with all due respect to Little John, who's coming back after a week, a couple of weeks off from, uh, you know, knee surgery, um, just seems like the team made a few more plays with Little John in the lineup, including the uh, Verizon Long Distance play of the game. Well, 4.29 to go in the Riverfront Classic. Mark Gray, Lewis Breeden, Dwayne Ballin, happy to be bringing this game to you. We're on the banks of the Ohio River in bucolic Cincinnati. Is that anything like pretty? Dominic Washington, the quarterback of record on this play for Morgan State. First and 10 from the Bears' 15-yard line. Not much time and a lot to make up. Washington looking to go to the air. As a receiver, Tremaine Norris, the backup tight end. Well, it, maybe it's me, but it just seems like the picture-perfect passes that he's thrown as receivers haven't gotten. And these low balls, well, they're beginning to start catching if you're Dominic Washington. The teammates really haven't helped him out today. Nine-yard pickup sets up second and one. Washington time to throw. Good coverage by Florida A&M. Now Washington has to run it. Gets out of bounds and appears to have a first down. Well, fam, you dropping seven or eight guys in the coverage right now, and they're lining up in a soft zone, and they're dropping back to even softer. That's why he's able to sit back there, survey, then reverse his field and pick up a first down. Smart move by him, though. He gets outside the pocket, then he gets out of bounds. And there's uh, Jorge Pena, who was a starting quarterback at this point last season, who Coach Hill told me in his office the other day that he thought that this kid was – you know, he's the brains of the team. He says he's one of the smartest players on the on the floor. He's going to know where everybody is supposed to be. First and ten. Washington time to throw again. Good coverage once again by AMU. Forcing 
Washington to run. He and Levy Brown exchanging words. I think those are pleasant truths. I'm not quite sure LeJohn coming back from a bad knee wants to get too crazy on the FAMU sideline. I think Levy Brown thought maybe that his face mask was grabbed. It was probably just a little bit. Morgan State next week. They will return to Baltimore for the first time this season. Their home opener against Monmouth University. And then I'm anxious to see uh, in, a, in two weeks Bethune Cookman comes to Morgan. That will be an interesting contact. Second and five from the 42. Washington pumps. It goes down. He never saw Grill Chris coming. Well, again, the problems on the Morgan offensive front, once again, the Wesley Charles is having, just opened it up for uh, Amir Gabarel. He to, probably never saw Gil Chris coming because he wasn't coming. It was Gabarel. <laughs> and it's just, you know, but it's just amazing to watch the problems that Wesley Charles is continuing to have. Seven sacks recorded by Florida A&M this afternoon. And Le many of them have come because the right side of the Morgan offensive front hasn't been really doing their job. Third and long for Washington. Has a receiver, Shan Cole, but he's short of the first down. Well, with 2.45 to go, you got to believe that uh, they're going to go for it here. Fourth and one. Morgan State trailing 34-16 in the Riverfront Classic. Donald Hill, Ely's team, could have really folded its tent in the first half. Did not do that. Exciting third quarter. Things have gotten away from the Bears a bit in the fourth quarter. Washington out of the shotgun from his 46. Keeps it, and he may not have gotten that first down. He didn't, and that's going to pretty much ice it for Florida A&M. Went, went to the well one time too many with that same play. And Coach Hill, there will be better days ahead. His Bears haven't beaten these Rattlers since 1994, but he shouldn't feel too bad. Not too many teams are beating Billy Joe's Florida A&M Rattlers. Now, the last time that Morgan State had a winning season mark was 1979. Now, friends, to get some perspective on this so you understand how long it's been, Jimmy Carter resided in the White House. Coach Hill Ely was 10 years of age. None of the current players were born. I was trying to fumble my way around as a freshman in college. You were in junior high school discovering girls. And mad at the Orioles as I am this season. And Lewis Breeden was playing for the Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> it's been a long time. Like Morgan State's last winning season. But I will say something, though. And, you know, uh, the football fortunes haven't been so good, but you look at the job that President Richardson and the, the administration is doing right now in terms of on-campus facilities. You've got a state-of-the-art stadium. You've got uh, a brand-new fine arts center, which is one of the premier uh, music venues on the East Coast. And, of course, you still have the Welcome Bridge. And I'd like to send this one out to Travis Mitchell, who's the chief executive officer of NBC. The bridgeology is still in effect. On the other side of the ball, Florida A&M will move to 2-1 and one with this apparent victory. And Billy Joe opening up his MEAC season 1-0. and all. His Rattlers will be trying to become just the second team to win three Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference championships. This would be their third straight. The first team to do it, South Carolina State. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. And that was under the legendary coach Willie Jeffries during his first time there. And when you think about it, the teams that, that Florida, um, excuse me, South Carolina State had, had the likes of Harry Carson and Donnie Sheldon wow. at the time. Woo. Today's game, executive produced by Johnny Tyus. Produced by Rick Walensic, statistician Allie Carter, Chiron Nicole Trimmer, operations manager Keith Green, Jeff Moran, our stage manager, technical director Dave Shrine, Mike Steinberg, we mentioned earlier, providing us with wonderful information up here in the booth. Glad you joined us. Don't forget tonight, there's more black college football here on NBC. Nicole Watson, Charlie Neal, Jay Walker are in Arkansas Pine Bluff to watch Southern in Arkansas Pine Bluff. Should be a great game.
Should, it really should. Master of wits between uh, two good coaches. Lee Hardman, probably one of the more underrated coaches in, in uh, all of black college football right now. Done an outstanding job since taking over that program a few years ago. Two of those that stood out the most in this game this afternoon, Casey Printers for Florida A&M. What a first half he had. 192 yards passing. Student athlete, game player of the game for Florida A&M, Casey Printers. Outstanding job. I thought you could have also gone with uh, Rashad Pompey as well. 110 left to go here at the Riverfront Classic. Certainly enjoyed it. Like to thank A. Lamont, Germany, and Alvin Hollins, the media direct media relations directors of Morgan State and Florida A&M, respectively. They've certainly made our job easier this week. Four seconds left on the play clock. Devin Richardson, Florida A&M keeping it on the ground. So Morgan State will go to 0-3, zero 0-1 and three, zero and one in the conference. Florida A&M 2-1 and 1-0 one and one and oh in the conference. So next week you and I get to go to Tuskegee. We will be there. Scintillating matchup between Tuskegee and Miles. Will you be joining me for some fish and grits, Dwayne? Ah, uh, well. In spirit, I will be with you. Oh, that's right. We ate fish and grits last night. Well, you did. I fish did. and chips. Inside of a minute to go here at Paul Brown Stadium. Nice meal. It really was. Yeah, enjoyed, <laughs> enjoyed the hospitality here yeah. in the Queen City. I guess this is the Queen City North because Charlotte, North Carolina is the Queen City South. There can be two queens. Two queens. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Morgan State, a lot of rebuilding to do, but... They feel they have the man to get it done, coach. <laughs> and, of course, there was no double entendre there at all. <laughs> Billy Joe seems to be the same old song for Florida A&M. Starting off strong once again, the team to beat in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, ranked third nationally in the black college pole. Well, much like the New England Patriots in the National Football League, it's their title until they are beaten. Keeping it on the ground. Richardson, determined run. Been a very impressive performance for Florida A&M in the first half. Very dominating performance. And that really set the tone for this game. It certainly did. You know, you think about the Gulf Coast offense, you think about the passing, the, the, the three-step drops, the no huddle, the spread offense. But they are most effective when they're getting some semblance of offensive balance. It is the third and final timeout of the half. The most outstanding players of the game take a look at what they did. No surprise here. Casey Printers, 15 to 29, 195 yards and a touchdown. And that's in one half. Yeah, that's in a half. All right. And uh, the big show, Bradshaw Littlejohn, 224 yards total offense. I really think that Morgan's going to have to make a decision on who's the quarterback going to be. Uh, I understand that you want to keep the competition healthy to keep both players on their game, but the quarterback is the one position where I've never been a great big proponent of shuttling. I mean, you stay with it. That's your leader. You know, that's your, uh, he's a field general. And you got to make a commitment to who's going to lead the team offensively. Donald Hill Ely, his first season is beginning in Baltimore. Folks, be patient with him. You're probably going to like yep. the results quite a bit. Well, they're, one, they're organized. They're disciplined, and they don't quit. They're showing a much bigger heart than we've seen in the Bear team. You know, we had them against Howard last year when they christened the new stadium. And, uh, you know, midway through the third, third quarter, they had just about packed it in. And in, in, in a circumstance similar to this, they picked themselves up, and they showed a lot of heart and a lot of fight this afternoon. Morgan State will have the ball with 29 seconds to go. Now Dominic Washington out of the shotgun where he's operated for him. Great grab by T.J. Stallings. Still maneuvering and gets down to the 25-yard line or close to it. 
Good job by Stallings to climb the ladder. And that speaks to the point you were just making about these bears, this group of bears, will not give up. Nope, they haven't quit. A 37-yard pickup. That's positive. You know, you, you look at this Morgan team and you see a team, you're almost inclined to agree with Billy Joe, who said before the game, you know, they're going to knock some, some teams off in the conference this year. That struck me when we were having a conversation with Coach Joe of Florida A&M, who was one of the most successful coaches, second most vic second victories among active Division I AA coaches, he said that what Donald Hill Ely is going to do at Morgan State is going to be impressive, and they will beat some people this year. Out of the shotgun, LeJomini Washington. It's a, you, you know, when, when you've lost as much as Morgan has, they just know how to lose. You've got to change the mindset, and it's the psychological game that Coach Hill talks about that he's got to help his team overcome. You know, the psychological hurdles of not being scared of success. You know, a lot of teams who, you know, when you're beaten down, beaten down, beaten down, you, get, you have a chance to win, there's a fumble. There's a bad snap. There's an interception, and Morgan had a, or a breakdown defensively, as we saw. That's, that means West Side, Dwayne. <laughs> my, my very hip partner was explaining to me what that gesture was. The player from Florida a was making. See, I had no, I had no clue. I'll fess up. Lejominic Washington again to the air, and it is nearly intercepted. Three seconds left to go in the game. Well, thank you for helping me out because. <laughs> I had that look on my face. When it comes to cool, we understand you are a work in progress. I am cool my friend. challenged. <laughs> <laughs> cool impaired, yes. <laughs> Florida AM's Rattlers, a little strut in their stride. They're starting off 1 0 in the conference once again. Lejominic <laughs> Washington, this should do it. Tossing towards the end zone. It is incomplete. That is the ball game. Morgan State puts up a fight after getting in a deep hole, 24-0. But Florida A&M too overwhelming on both sides of the ball as Billy Joel racks up another victory and extends the series advantage to 15-3 Florida A&M as the Rattlers defeat Morgan State's Bears 34-16 here in Cincinnati. Well, if we learn anything about Florida A&M, we knew coming in that Casey Printers was a talented quarterback who had NFL potential, and he did nothing at all to disprove those thoughts. The thing I leave here most impressed about Florida A&M, Dwayne, is their running backs. Normally, you're used to accustomed to the bruising type of running backs like the O.J. Marchbanks and the Kelsey Lordiuses. They've got home run backs now. You got Devin Richardson and you got Rashad Pompey. And when you've got the home run capability with the run game to go with the home run capability of the passing attack, wow, boy, it, it, it's going to be tough to stop them down the stretch. And there's the hardware that the Rattlers will take home as the victors once again in the Riverfront Classic. Tony Bill L.A. will have some work to do, but he believes he can get it done. Rashard Pompey, you mentioned the running back for Florida A&M. Boy, is he impressive. You see the players shaking hands. They move on now. Next week for Florida A&M, a visit to Delaware State in Dover. And, of course, the home opener we alluded to earlier for Morgan State against Monmouth. It's Florida A&M doing it. Today's final score. 34-16, Florida A&M victorious. Coming up later tonight, another classic matchup. Stay tuned. Southern takes on Arkansas Pine Bluff. Nicole Watson, Charlie Neal, and Jay Walker have the call at Lions Stadium in Arkansas. That's tonight at 7.30 p.m. Coming up next here on NBC, Inside NBC. For Lewis Breeden, Mark Gray, this is Dwayne Ballon saying so long from Cincinnati.